Listen to me. Please listen. If you don't, if you won't, if you fail to understand, then the same incredible terror that's menacing me will strike at you! Hey guys, uh, da, 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 da. hold on one second. Hey, welcome to the channel, and uh, I'm here today with uh, Jeffrey Augustine and our special guest, Larry Anderson. And we're here. Hey, what are you reading there, Larry? Oh, oh. I, I just was reading the book that Jeffrey loaned me. Yeah, hey, the money's falling out of your pocket. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate <laughs> yeah. the plug. Uh, so anyway, we're here. No, to no, it's, a, it's a book club. It's the Big yeah. Lie Book Club. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, we all read it. We meet on Thursdays for coffee. Yeah. Yeah, and, and all of you are invited, by the way. Anybody who's in yeah. town, or we we do it virtually. It's like all good. Anyway, we're very, very pleased to have Larry Anderson with us to talk about yeah. uh, what David Miscavige deemed the most crucial film in the history of humanity. So, um, seems like all that, time, Mitch. <laughs> yeah, it does. It really does. You know, we always wanted to. I haven't seen, listen, I got to tell you guys, I haven't seen Larry in years. I ran into him. I was, I was still in Scientology. He had left. I ran into him in a taco bar on Sunset Boulevard. I was cradling a cell phone to my ear. He walked out of the taco bar and very warmly said, Mitch. And I was like, eh. Uh, like, fortunately, I was on my cell phone, so I didn't have to talk to him. But yeah. it, it, it's such a weird cognitive dissonance. You know, I got this. You know, you, I've talked about this. You compartmentalize things. So when Ooh. somebody leaves, like Larry, who was a friend and you really like, you just put them in a compartment. You shut the door because you're not going to, myself personally, I don't want to deal with all the negative stuff. So anyway, I'm so happy to open yeah. the lid and let you out of the compartment. That's just in my universe. And you, uh, so, so you're very welcome. And, and how excited I was when I heard that you had gotten out. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I tried to figure out how to make contact. And then suddenly your book is out. And it's out. Yeah. But the day it was released and started reading, I'm only about a third of the way through because I don't have a lot of time, but I get to it. Every now yeah, well, I, thank you very much, Larry. I think for anybody who was close to that situation, the book will be in, in, in very in, interesting. But even people who just are not even, they just want to read a book about an authentic human experience have been really appreciating the book. So I've gotten a lot of good feedback. So th thanks a lot. Hey, we got a, we got a few people in here, which is good. Uh, yeah. Okay, good. So now this whole thing started... Because I got a letter. I, I, I found a letter. I forgot about it. it. A letter from David Miscavige. And in that letter, he said, he referred to this film as the most crucial film in the history of Scientology. We read that. We were asked, Jeffrey and I were asked to show more of the film. You contact, contacted us and said, please, like, like, you know, then we decided to do this. But then it turns out you have your own letter. I do. I do. Like, it yeah. So, it was so fun. To get a little context. You know, I've, I haven't done any media in, in 14 years uh, since uh, the St. Pete Times, actually. I did one thing after that. Right, right. And then, so I've just been, you know, I moved out of LA uh, and I've been just monitoring the Scientology stuff. Even right. The Scientology stuff. And so, and of course, you know, Aaron and the various, all the sites, and then you went on and I said, well, I got to see what Mitch is doing. So I always have on the left, right side of, of YouTube all the right. sites are all right. And so right. what, five nights ago, six nights ago, whatever it was, I see a little <laughs> thumbnail and go, Mitch and Jeffrey discuss orientation. I said, oh, Penny, Penny, my, 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 two D, my wife, everybody. Uh, and uh, I said, we got to watch this. So we went in the uh, living room on our Roku and, and streamed it. And we were just having so much fun watching you two recollect. Uh, yeah. And, and, and I must say must misrecollect remember yeah yeah like i couldn't remember <laughs> it i couldn't remember it was robert f lyons bobby lyons playing the ethics officer oh that's right yeah yeah, yeah. i could not remember that <clears throat> it's amazing what some of us remember and other of us don't and he had that great line about uh because all he talked about was how they need to catch 
the 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 psych patients who've been destroyed by psychiatry, and he talks about you know they they've been electroshocked but they don't know it but but they've been drugged. I mean that was like his entire message. Yeah. Anyway, and yeah, it was so great. serious too. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, that was Bobby. He was just very serious. Yeah. <clears throat> but he's still out there at OT8. He's in his 80s. He's still acting. He's still teaching Scientologists. Yeah. Here he's still kicking around. Yeah, no, he's he's yeah. he's still being is what he is. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so great. So um, yeah, we really I you know, I forgot what a journey this was, Larry, and that you reminded me of some of the things. Like I'd forgotten that we'd shot it twice. We'll talk about that. I'd forgotten that we you know, this was when we outgrew the studio at gold. And we were desperately renting little shithole studios in Hollywood. And um, we ended up, you know, having, you know, it, we'll tell the story, but it, let's talk, let's, let's read your letter. I'll bring okay. it up on the screen here. Okay. So if you wouldn't mind, you do have it there or do you want me to read it or do you want to read uh, it? You know, who, who, Mitch, or Jeffrey, did you read Mitch's letter for him? So he yeah, he did. He did. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to appoint <laughs> Mitch as the official. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jeffrey, can, do you have a copy yeah. of it? Oh, yeah, I, I can. I, you want me to read it? Yeah, sure. you read it. Okay, it's from the Religious Technology Center. It's on David Miscavige's personal letterhead, <clears throat> yep. dated March 18, 1996. Dear Larry, your performance was brilliant. This isn't my opinion. It is a fact. How do I know? Because the toughest thing about your part was to be the message itself and to somehow not get in the way of its purity and essence. And you pulled it off. That sounds like Dr. Strangelove, purity of essence, doesn't that? Yes. <laughs> or Dan Sherman. Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the same thing. Sorry, go um, ahead. Yeah. It's purity of essence. And you pulled it off magnificently. All people remember was the message. Now, how can that be? After all, they aren't saying, did you see how he, how he played that part? They only talk about the message itself. I have never heard of a person giving a five-minute monologue and themselves not being the point. The answer is you were the part. Frankly, I never imagined the message could be delivered so powerfully. There isn't another person on earth who could have performed it as you did. I know you did justice to what LRH envisioned. As a result, millions have you to thank for putting them on the path that leads up. Love, David Miscavige. Chairman of the Board, Religious Technology Center. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Nice, nice job. Nice job, Jeff. I, I didn't I mean, get a we much need a... love. I, I got a love. I didn't get a much love. Like, uh, yeah, I got a much love. Oh, well. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, I the, think uh, that much love is more an internal thing. It's. I'm sorry. It sounds a little too festive, maybe. Yeah. Uh, festive being a euphemism. Uh, so, yeah, fantastic. So you got this letter. That's well, speaking, a... well, speaking of euphemism, euphemism, I think the last line should really read. Really Really yeah, yeah. As a result, millions have you to thank for putting as a result. millions in my pocket. Love, yeah, David. yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and Larry, Larry, how many millions have thanked you? I mean, have you oh, had yeah. millions of over yeah. the years? They come up to you, to restaurants, bars, you know, pool halls. <laughs> You're the guy I want to thank you for putting me on a path that leads up. Yeah. <laughs> That broke my family. And our <laughs> <laughs> Tell you, I have my own atonement to do. Yeah, well, let's, uh, we, we, this actually started, we were going to do, you know, I showed the clip from that bad cell phone copy of you delivering those incredible lines about blowing out your brains and jumping off a bridge. And some, some viewers asked us to show the entire film. We'll scan through it. We'll show some sequences. I think it would be like Chinese water torture. Uh, yeah. I don't think I can handle that much combination of belly laughing and re-traumatizing all at the same time. So I think we might have to take that in pieces. But uh, well, if anybody that really wants to watch every minute of it, I think it is on YouTube. You can yeah, it's there. You can just yeah. you can download it and then you can send questions. You can send yeah. questions yeah. to me. Yes, Larry, are you reachable yeah. anywhere? Do you have a, a safe email that people can reach you on if they have questions? No, I don't want those questions. Yeah. Okay. Have. Okay. Good. Well, yeah, I have a I have email yeah, addresses right. just for that. Yeah. Well, if you have questions for Larry, you can send them to yeah. Scientology yeah. the Big Lie at uh, at, at gmail .com, and I will do uh, every everything I can to answer them. Uh, so I'm just I'm looking here. Uh, to, to, okay. So I want to bring up some photos well, I, before we look at some of the film. I wanted to bring up. 
some photos. Okay, this is an interesting one. Wow, look at that. <clears throat> yeah, this is you and Norman Starkey, the late Norman Starkey, former trustee of uh, Hubbard's estate and a former uh, miscavige lapdog and 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 victim. Uh, An occasional and, alcoholic. Yeah, I was going to say, come on, what's the name of the comedian from Ed Sullivan? <laughs> yeah, Foster Brooks. Oh, Foster Brooks, yeah. Foster. yeah. Yeah, the let's just say that uh, Norman Starkey was the Foster Brooks of Scientology. That boy would take a drink, mm -hmm. as they say in the <laughs> yeah. south. And so we shot this at the at the LRH Life Exhibition, that had been com completed, I think, in late '91 or '92, and uh, you know, so we Miscavige decided it would be a good setting. Uh, so we walked through this this Ron the Writer exhibit, and and uh, uh, Norman explained. Uh, Norman explained, uh, you know, about uh, Hubbard's non his pulp days, his dime novel days, when he was. Uh... Yep, yep. Okay, here we go. I've got to just show this. Already. <laughs> hey, this this is from Anonymous is watching. Wow, Mitch and Larry, the director and the star of Orientation film, all in one place. Larry, I hope you, I hope you were successful in getting your money returned to you when you decided to leave. Thank you very much for that comment. The answer uh, yeah, is not. <laughs> yeah, we're thrilled to be here together. Uh, just not as the, even as the makers of orientation, but just as two people who really had a great friendship and went through a lot. And now we can actually talk to one another. And along uh, with Jeffrey, who apparently he made clear in the last in the first installment of, of the orientation saga a few nights ago, how much he admired the production and uh, all yeah, of the yeah. aspects of it uh, when he saw it and for, for a piece of propaganda. He said it was brilliant. So it's it kind of nice yeah. to have him here to share with us. Yeah. yeah, and I think we may look at a couple of the pieces uh, that are that are really chief propaganda pieces because a lot of it is just boilerplate, a lot of that film. And there's some yeah. pieces that are very, very, it, very it, much... It, Mitch, what yeah. I'd like to add to this episode, uh, when you when when we look at it, I want to do the back end of how the creativity that you and Larry put into this was translated into legal documents. Right. So I, I want to show the, the 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 context, LRH policy. So I want to show like the back end, what what the yeah. Uh, I think before we run it, be. yeah. Before we run it, we will do that because I think that's okay. actually. Sure. Of, of everything yeah. we do today, that must be the that may be the most important yeah. thing. Yeah, if you understand the context of why it was created, yeah, then yeah. this is and then you know Larry and I want I have questions for Larry about the scenes. We talked off camera. I was just captivated. For example, just before we begin, Larry, you and I talked about that suit you were wearing. Mitch mentioned you went through twenty nine shades of blue to get that suit. <laughs> yeah. Do you yeah. remember, Larry? Well, I, I missed, I think that was probably a lot of the pre-production. Uh, yeah, a I lot do, of it, we just draped it on mannequins and so forth. Sure. Yeah. No I reason to have to pay Larry. Yeah, and I'm guessing when the decision was made, I mean, um, and you, I probably came in, you held up a few swatches to me and see how that goes great with his coloring or whatever. Then ultimately, I went to Beverly Hills where DM and all the executive staff go whenever they did uh, events or anywhere out in the yeah. public they were to Mr. Look like Mr. Lim, Mr. Lim, right? That on their suits too. But yeah. what was it? Wasn't yeah, that was Larry? Was it Lim? Is, is that what you well, said? Well, I don't know because Lim wasn't in Beverly Hills. He was down in the Miracle Mile, and oh, he okay, is, but it was on Wilshire Boulevard. Yeah, Wilshire down in yeah. the Miracle Mile. Okay. That was okay. Mr. Lim. He is one of the top custom suit makers in all of LA. I mean, he's like Mr. Yeah. Celebrity Suit. Well, what mentioned to Larry that you know that, that's probably a five thousand dollar power suit and adjusted for inflation, it would be more. <laughs> but it's it was such an you know I I in, in my thirty years of corporate I wore power suits, and when mm -hmm. I saw that I thought man that that is a power suit. Yeah. And, and there's nothing better anyone knows than custom fit clothing, and I'm just yeah. going to give away a little bit ahead. Uh, hope you don't mind, Larry, but I had to ask. I asked Larry. After the shooting, did they let you keep the power yeah. suit? Absolutely. No. no. Absolutely no. No. Oh, yeah, I have right. to. I have to add to that that the other day I mentioned we hired Colleen Atwood, to uh, Oscar-winning costume designer, to do costumes for wow, the professional really? T yeah, the professional TRs course. Mm. She did the blue tunics. We'll talk about that sometime. Yeah. Okay. But but Colleen, uh, she's done most of Johnny Depp's films. Oh. She she's done all of the 
pirates film. She did Edward Scissor's Scissorhands. She did, um, she did Alice. Uh, she's she won an Oscar for you know uh, uh, Memoirs of a Geisha, and she very oh. graciously let me hire her to to work for me on a tech film. She wow. have Johnny Depp keeps all of his costumes. Yeah, like it's in his deal. Like he sometimes auctions them off for charity for a quarter million dollars. But you know, usually yeah. actors often are allowed to keep them. They but not write a letter for me on my behalf and say, please. Yeah, them. yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, you could always go to Mister Lamb; he'd make you another one. Yes. But yeah, it was a beautiful shade of blue. You know, we had to get it so that on thirty-five millimeter film. Uh, it wouldn't look black. Navy blue goes black mm. on film, so you have to get it to be bright enough, and then it starts to look electric. And so you want this almost black look with these electric blue highlights. And we got it, and it's it's an amazing look. I mean, yeah. I don't have. We might see it on these stills. It really looks different on thirty five millimeter film. Yeah, there it kind of looks black. These are just scans of. of pictures i have yeah yeah so you're not going to really see that here let's move on to the next one yeah okay this is on the set i must say everybody that i can see there has left except the guy on camera and this yeah. was this was a set uh at the uh, i don't remember where we even shot this but it's before the castle at gold so we rented the studio but uh no Je mitch this is at the castle oh this is the castle yeah oh. it was, it was one of the first films we when we got in there we were oh yeah right. yeah 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 i forgot about that yeah yeah, yeah. That's the book. Story. That's right, because I remember reshooting that ending in the castle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Right. No, uh, we shot yeah. it at Hollywood General in. in uh, right, Hollywood General on on Santa Monica and yeah. uh, between right, Gallup. Right, employment office where I spent a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, there one individual there uh, in the middle, the guy reading the light meter. Uh, and he uh, made a made a, a run for it. Fortunately, he got himself freed when he was young, and he went on to be hugely successful yeah. in the field of lighting. And we're all very proud of him. Uh, he re he reached out to me recently, and he was we were almost in tears. And he yeah. said, "Mitch, it was because of you. I had the confidence and and the and the courage to leave the Sea Org and strike out on my own." And I was like, "Oh my God." You know, I might be flat broke, but I have that as a legacy. So thank you. Uh, hopefully someday he'll tell his story. Okay, what do we have next? But yeah, you can see that's, that's pretty impressive. We really put a lot into it. Oh, yeah. So here's Larry with uh, uh, Jim Eskiman, who's still acting as a, a Scientology tool. You know, when people go through arbitration and they... He's pretty much gets picked for every arbitration as a Scientologist oh, oh. in good standing. Yeah, it's really ridiculous. It's like they only have a couple of people that they trust to do yeah. things like that. And Jim's one of them. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's too bad because he's a talented guy. Oh, he's very talented. Very yeah. likable person, I guess, if you're on the right side of the yeah. spectrum. But a very likable guy. And by the yeah. way, a bit of trivia. His mother is... Right. Uh, is uh, the mother in Happy Days? Yeah, uh, I can never remember her name. Ray Ross is her name, and I can't remember the mother's name. But yeah, yeah. I mean the yeah the but that was that was some yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah. So Jim's he's had that he grew up with that TV money, and his father was a film director. So he he's like, you know, Nepto a Nepto Sial. Yeah, he's a Nepto. Well, his parents weren't skills, but he's a Nepto. Yeah, Nepto yeah. slap. Yeah, exactly. You got it. And here he's, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's playing the course supervisor. In oh, yeah. Course. Let's go back to that. I don't want to look yeah. at this photo. So the bookstore was the previous shot. Now we're in the course because orientation, I think you explained this, but orientation was about, in, in addition to many other things, it was me going around a typical Scientology organization and showing you what goes on. Hence orientation, not only to Scientology, but to a, a, an organization. So uh, that was right. The, right. In, in the course room. Yeah. Talking Oops. to all of yeah. Are, yeah. yeah, so yeah, we were just looking at the Scientology org board. Oh. Uh, well, no, that's fine. So because basically I'm going to just put this up here. Okay, the, yeah. uh, the, the centerpiece of the film is the organizing board. And Larry, the, who was referred to in the script as the commentator, would continue to go back to this. This was like home base. He would go back to home base and he would explain the next division, which are those vertical, uh, those vertical rectangles. And uh, up here in the upper right, you have L. Ron Hubbard. Right below him, you have... Uh, uh, the religious uh, you have David Miscavige on the Religious Technology Center, and then all of this is all of the organization of Scientology, and um, so yeah, that was that. So, 
Now, this next shot is kind of interesting. This is, I decided to show up, I guess, for a shoot that day in my pajamas. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I look at that, I'm like, I can't believe what I'm wearing. I, they, I thought it was. They, bet you wore those every other day for sure. Well, they were so comfortable. That, and yeah. I hated sitting around a studio all day. So they were like, I would wear these. I'm wearing my of, pants right now. I don't know if you can see them, but they're the exact same thing, but they're darker. They had the check. Well, I appreciate the backup. <laughs> I but thought, yeah, you know, uh, Mitch, for a minute, I thought that was Chevy Chase in the in the scene. Who had snuck in? Yeah. yeah just so, you, uh, anyway. Notice, notice that the girl on the it's right Giannis. side of the frame, um, she has a shirt, a yellow shirt. That's the designated color for the <clears throat> costumes department. And, hmm. and, and she has a huge across her back. She has uh, the word costumes. And this is really one of these stupid things <laughs> that, that Hubbard came up with, like, when he first put together a crew, nobody knew what they were doing and nobody knew what anybody else did. So he designated colors for the different departments and had them wear these, these huge, you know, it has them designated with these gigantic words on the back. The script supervisor, because there's only one script supervisor, she was bright red because you had to, she had to be easy to find. And I started taking them out on location a lot. Previously, they didn't go on location. And it became really an embarrassment because there was this really odd crew. You'd be in downtown LA and there'd be these people running around. And people would come up to us and they'd say, are you shooting an educational film about filmmaking for like kindergartners or something like that? Like really weird stuff. So then Miscavige decided maybe we should update the costumes. And I think you'll see some of those later. I think I think in this earlier one, uh, I just want to look here. Yeah, these were sort of the later costumes and they were sort of, everybody wore the same khakis, the guys, and they had like knit shirts and they were the, the still colors, the, the gaffers, the lighting guys, like this guy on the left they were black and then the camera department was this kind of teal color and so, so forth. But and yeah, the things, on the back of my suit it says narrator. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, and then there's Mitch Brisker. Who's like my costume is maybe my pajamas if they smell clean enough to go to work in. So because M Mitch, let me jump on. This is a priceless sure. shot because you have these, you know, Larry's in a $5,000 suit, all the wardrobes expensive. Yeah. And then you, oh, yeah, you yeah, yeah. Your, Those everything's oh. custom made, everything's oh. custom made there. And then you and you in your pajamas, basically. This yeah. is a priceless shot of but reality. That's kind of typical, I think, for a, a See, we had to what? roll in at six in the morning to get in makeup, and he rolls yeah. in at 8 30 in the morning in his pajamas ready to shoot. <laughs> yeah, but it's with a great a, shot. With Starbucks. Yeah. yeah, it's also now look what Larry's holding. Larry is holding a basic book pack. Yeah, so there's a lot of marketing going on. Uh, in the center, there's uh. Kelly Daniels is a terrific actress. And one of these people, you know, you know, Larry, when you leave Scientology, you have to say goodbye to certain people that you really like. And Kelly was one of those people. Mm -hmm. She's very talented. Our kids grew up together. Uh, and, but you know, she's still doing her thing. Uh, so she's selling Larry this pack. Like it's a jumbo pack yeah. of Scientology basic books and you better buy one because they're very popular and they run out quickly. They sell out quickly. Yeah. Because remember, a marketer's greatest tools are urgency and scarcity. So buy now while supplies last. They even have a way of doing that in Scientology. Yeah. But wait, there's more. And you can yeah. see Phyllis over, your, over behind you there. And yeah. What's that? Is who? Oh, that's Phyllis. Yeah. I, oh, yeah, right there. In the, that's the script supervisor. Yeah. She left shortly after this film was made, and she uh, made a success of herself in media, making, I think, uh, political campaign films and whatever she's doing great i saw her shortly i moved out she flew to la and saw me oh, and sh she's doing great she's she was such a dear friend uh, uh let's look at the next one so we're kind of walking down the memory lane here we're still in the bookstore there and this is more bookstore and that's kelly yeah this is uh the makeup department was worried about kelly getting makeup out there we do this a lot mm. like to take your clothes away so they could you know keep yeah. them fresh and keep the makeup off of them a lot of photos that day in the book. Nah, there you go. There's Larry oh, reading, wow. reading from L. Ron Hubbard's classic book, The Way to Happiness. Actually, it's one of these with a little blank cover over it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I should actually, I should shoot that. Yes, so you should put it right in there. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could, I could use that for maybe a book ad. So, uh, and that's the Milky, the Milky Way and back, the Cosmos. Something, yeah, something. Yeah. I think I, I think I went through these. I'm, yeah, the, I'll look and see if I have any more. But uh, oh, Jeffrey, more, right? yeah, there's more. I just didn't get the PDF. Jeffrey, you have some photos. Do you want to put them yeah. up? Yeah, let me. Uh, there's Michael let me, D. Roberts. 
that I sent you? And uh, oh yeah, yeah. No, I'm looking for those. I just oh, okay. Uh, well, I, well, we're looking for. Yeah. Well, well, this is from. Uh, you know, I, I grabbed these from. Uh, I posted. I was posting on Zenu.net because when I first saw the film, you got to remember I was a you know a, a public that wasn't in for a very long time. Right. And on Zenu.net, when the yeah, film yeah, you were a linked, you were a sort of in right. There's like born yeah, is yeah, never ends. And yeah, sort of in. I went in when Hassey was the membership organization oh, wow. prior to the IAS. So it was 82, 83. So I was a Hassey era. And, uh, but, but anyway, my, my point is when this came out on Xeno.net, it blew everyone's mind. The film, I, I sat to tell you, Larry and Mitch, uh, as a, a, a critic, when people first saw this, who were not Scientologists in an org, it blew our minds. It was like a, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I mean, it was like, it was really? like, you know, it That's was scorched. Amazing. Well, it was scorched earth. Uh, at least I thought for me. if you were in, you would be like, "Whoa, this is amazing." Uh, to but an no. outsider, it's a terrifying film. It's psychologically, <laughs> it's, you realize what's going on psychologically. So uh, the contrast right. between what I could see is a what I could see is a critic, and what Scientologists would see it shows the shift in perspective because you know everyone has their own version of a film. You know, uh, and that just goes to the viewer. So this is Larry. And now this is this is what I'm going to do some context before we get into the film. This is on an old Scientology website. It tells you, you know, if you read it is what is Scientology? And it tells you what the film takes you inside of and how it describes Scientology. It's a 37 minute film, which I don't know how long it took to shoot and put all edit and post and all pre, but it must have been a huge amount of effort. But the film's 37 minutes. And then this is another thing from an old Scientology website. So they were promoting it, but no one, you know, er, they were promoting it, but everyone had to see it. Even if you had been in the, in Scientology for a long time, you still oh, had yeah. to see it. Yeah. And, and David Miss. Over and over and over again. <laughs> every staff member yeah. of every org. Finally, now, let me give, yeah, let me give you the context. <laughs> this is a Scientology policy directive of 22 August 2000. And I'm going to make this big, take us off for a minute. And uh, to the left-hand side, it said that in HCO policy letter of 18 February 1966, attacks on Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard states, the third group of actions have been positive in stopping attacks, uh, G3.5, getting waivers from all people we sign up. Now, in uh, 19... 66, L. Ron Hubbard realized he had to get Scientologists to sign away their legal rights to sue and get, uh, sign up, you know, sign away all their legal rights. So translated over time, you move ahead to 19, uh, this um, 2000, 22 August policy directive. If you look to the right, enrollment form and org lines, if you go down to the bottom, you, you have to sign the first contract, religious services enrollment agreement general lease right. agreement regarding confidential files. And this is all on my blog. I'll, I have a link over my uh, site, but attestation of religious belief regarding the Scientology religious film called orientation. So the point I wanted to make there, um, the point I wanted to make there is that this film became translated into a contract that right. you signed. And this is the contract. So when you see the film, so the results of all your efforts as a director, actor, um, the, some of the greatest film in the human history, according to Dave Miscavige, is you sign this contract whereby you agree that Scientology is a religion. And it goes through everything. Now, this goes to the Department of Valdox, which means valuable documents. So you, so it's summated, your creative work summated to a legal document whereby Scientologists are stripped of their legal and civil rights to sue, right. to view their files, to do anything. And they even agree there's a contract where you agree to be taken into the introspection rundown. So I just wanted to le leave you with this as kind of thing I have. Uh, LRH in 68, we deliver what we promise. But by 1996, when this contract came out, it's like L at, at no time did LRH promise people anything or claim anything for Dianetics and Scientology. So uh oh here's a line if it wasn't for applied glass it's got to be six feet under yeah <laughs> which, which 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 is which i'm going to remove this which is that that's consonant with the film 
Yeah, yeah they it, loved images. Like, Hubbard yeah. loved images of death, de what I call deathful yeah. images, because they they help keep people in control. He yeah. had the, he had these sayings like, you know, uh, head on a pike and the noose and you know, too gruesome and you know, all all of these kind of images. I've written about how well, the Azt Aztecs used to sacrifice people because the the image of death kept their people in line. You can't really do that today. So you you use imagery, you use words. Then Hubbard was adept at that. But that's really funny. Six feet under. Yeah, but the the point I want to make is that the film there's a, a beautiful creative effort, and there's and L. Ron Hubbard himself wrote the treatment, and, and you know, Mitch, right. you, and yeah, then, he wrote a lot of the dialogue, and he wrote a treatment, and it was very clear that this was going to be a contract because at the beginning of the very description, of, the the description of the film, which Hubbard wrote onto the beginning of the treatment, says the purpose of this film is to forestall litigation and to help people get around the org, but it was really to forestall litigation and that contract sure. is intended to do that. So that and this film is, this is the beginning of the affidavits. This is the beginning of you signing over your consent to the church of Scientology. It is. And, and Larry, Larry as an actor has to carry the weight of the film. And he and did. He, and he it, does it, it, fla it flawlessly. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He's uh yeah. So there's a lot uh, of moving. What I wanted to tell our viewers is there's a lot of moving parts going on in this film. You know, and I, one question I have for you, Larry, knowing that L. L. Ron Hubbard wrote the treatment, what burden did you feel as a Scientologist to get this oh, right? Tremendous burden, because when I first auditioned uh, for this, uh, there was a kind of an office set aside in Celebrity Center where they would hold auditions, you know, uh, the word would come from gold that there was a project and they'd send the material over and then they would pick a, a scene or scenes and they'd start bringing in at that time, a lot of the Scientology actors that were at Celebrity. Right, Center. right. They learned that was a mistake later, but they, so we, yeah. there are many people who audition and I know something, one was Heber and uh, Heber Jensen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and of course, many actors, including myself and, uh, but when, the material that was selected for the audition for the narrator naturally was probably the most important thing to, to to show whether or not he could you know muster what was necessary and that was the last five minute speech so that, that, yeah. that, that was the yeah. audition of course now they give you the material three pages or whatever that scene was and then you go away down the hall and you look at it for 10 minutes or whatever you need and then you go back and you deliver it to camera and of course in this case, you delivered it right at the camera, just like it was shot, because you're talking to the, the viewer, you know, uh, personally as you're saying these lines. But as I'm re reading <laughs> reading this material for the first time, down at the end of the hall uh, in Celebrity Center, I'm going, "Holy crap!" I I didn't believe what I was reading, and 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 the first question I had when I went back was, "Who wrote this?" You know, I didn't know whether this was, uh, <laughs> you know, is this the uh, uh, Hubbard was it David Miscavige? Was it a, a group of writers at Gold or what was it? And they said, no, this is this is L. Ron Hubbard's words. I mean, wow, wow. He, this is like you said, scorched earth. People are going to come in. They're going to sit. There, hey, what goes on here? Here, well, go on down to the film room. We'll show you what goes on here. <laughs> you know, raw public walking in and seeing this for the first thing. I'm thinking they're going to see me going. If you don't get in, you're going to blow, blow, blow your brains off or jump off a bridge. And yeah, you, it's it's there's a, it's equivalent. Yeah, and I mentioned yeah. a few other people on the slide when it was, you know, I got the role and I was like, oh, I'm saying 95% of the people are going to go, I am out of here. And they're going to run out the front door and then they're going to get the 5% that say, sign me up. You know, and I thought that's right. not a high ratio, but if they're willing to go for 5% of the people that come in with this, well, with this statement. Uh, uh, okay, a couple of things. One thing I have to give an aside about that remote casting office at Celebrity Center. Yeah. That went on for some years. And then after a while, Miscavige shut it down because he couldn't stand the idea that anybody from the international base would have that kind of freedom where they would have an, uh, be posted remotely to do casting. But the idea was it was incredibly difficult to do casting when you're you know, when you're 90 miles from LA, but I have to say that that casting office was, it enabled that uh, casting 
the fake casting of a girlfriend for Tom Cruise. That was part of that office because it was sort of already set up. So it really helped to legitimize the whole thing because it was already their casting office, you know, and then eventually everything, as you know, Larry, so much casting is done remotely with, you know, you just do stuff on your own camera and you send it in and blah, blah, blah. So yeah. that's, that's no longer um, such a, such a Mitch, big deal. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Can, can we take a question for Larry? That I think is very important. Yeah. Larry. Yeah. Larry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was Larry's thinking to proceed? Oh, with this interview. Okay. Yeah. This, yeah. Yeah. For the well, casting. <laughs> well, it, it truly was. I mean, as I mentioned at the top, I hadn't done any media since the St. Pete times in, in 2010. And uh, I just, we were, after, we were irresistible. After, after I'm sitting here watching you guys discussing this. I thought, I think it's time to just have a little fun and discuss. Yeah. You know, yeah. Not about disparaging. Yeah. Plus, the, you know, your voice is your always going to be important, Larry. That's just a fact. Yeah. So. And I just thought, and of course, Mitch and I were very good friends for, uh, <laughs> years as we made many films together and, yeah. and then of course i've known jeffrey for a long time now he and karen and you know various scientology yeah and, and all that yeah stuff. I, I i related larry i'm so glad to have you on because you know having seen you in the film w the day after you left there was that party that jason begay and mark and claire headley put at lake peru yes and, and and i'm there walking along with a friend and then i see you in the flesh, I go, you're the guy that did orientation. <laughs> and you tell me you, that you had literally blown the day before. Yeah. <laughs> and so f for me, I, I, you know, I've sometimes I felt like I'm, I'm, well, I don't want to say that, but sometimes I feel like I'm the, uh, in, in Donnie's uh, divine comedy. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I'm the narrator taking people on a, my, my side, you know, never ends through um a tour no, no, of the no. scientology almost, underworld sort of. right you know right right, right. like like taking people on a tour of the scientology underworld but seeing larry and seeing what a nice guy he is the, the disjunct between yeah. <laughs> his his humanness and the role he plays and, and you've seen that before yeah. when you've met actors right in, right in real life like when i met jason and um so it was interesting to see that he had actually come out he'd had this crisis and he left the church and that's when I thought, um, you know, what would Miscavige's response be to his his lead of one of the most important films in human history leaving? What was the fallout, Larry, right after you left? Well, interesting you should ask that question because we and we probably won't get to this, uh, but people who want to know can, can find this information. We can have a part two, but... Uh, yeah, you can get a little flavor of the answer to that question because when I announced that I was leaving, which is kind of a fun story in itself. And we go into this in what I'm going to tell you now is an audio tape that I made in a conference room in a hotel in Burbank, which was the place that I, uh, I said, I, I said to the people who were asking me to have this meeting, which was, well, who, oh, 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 hold on. Who was asking you? There's no reason, to, no reason to keep that secret. Okay, it was Tommy Davis. Right. And he, I think, I think they were husband. They may not have been husband and wife yet, or they yeah, were, no, Tommy and Jessica. Yeah, but they were right, still right, like right. whatever. They were just like yeah. two really yeah. high-level people in the org, and, yeah. and they're they're involved a lot with the celebrities at this time. And I had announced. Yeah. I think I, people know who Tommy Davis was. He was the one who famously kind of. Re, uh, sorry to interrupt, but I just so oh, the people yeah. watching know. He was the one who famously replaced Mike Rinder. Uh, they, they were sort of, Mike would get thrown in the hole and then Tommy would come out. Tommy would shove his foot in his mouth. He would disappear somewhere. Like he'd fly to Las Vegas and go stay at the, the win until things blew over, until he finally, you know, left the seer, but he's still a Scientologist. He was the one that famously went on CNN and said, oh, there's no such thing as disconnection as you characterize it. Yes. So that so then Tommy and, and his wife, soon-to-be wife, who I knew really well, uh, both of them upset, approach you and said, no, 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 we're going to talk you down from this tree yeah. that you're up. And hey, you, perfect. you very smartly said, okay, but I'm going to record it. And they let you, and they let yeah. you keep the recording, which yes. is absolutely insane. Yes. Because they wanted me to come to the church to, to right. have a, you know, I said, I'm not going to the church. It's right. wired for sound. It's wired for cameras everywhere I go. It's not going to happen that way. 
I said, oh, let's pick a place that's uh, completely separate. Of course, I allowed them to pick a hotel, which I later find out is the room that they have wired in Burbank. And it's like, oh, yeah, it's like a mafia meeting. It's a mafia oh, meeting. Everybody that <laughs> thinks they're going to an objective place outside of a church goes to this conference room and gets taped. And, you know, <laughs> so I wisely brought my own thing, and they let me uh, tape it. Uh, and I know they wish they hadn't because they said some things. Tommy reiterated about the disconnection and saying, you know, uh, your, all your friends are not going to be able to talk to you. And they were really twisting my arm. And I and I forgot now what your question was that led up, was leading to this long answer. But that audio tape was posted online um, at, to uh, the St. Pete Times when they did their article. And it's still right. up on some other people yeah. that posted it so right. you can find right. it on youtube larry anderson tommy davis uh, yeah jeffrey had yeah. asked uh, about fallout from yeah oh yeah uh so did you fall out like what fall out was that the question yeah yeah from your decision to leave and speaking out and so forth well, well, yeah. because you, well, you yeah the the one question are they going to have to reshoot the film and i and my understanding correct me if i'm wrong uh mitch and larry they kept showing the film for a number of years after yeah, you left, they did larry. they did yeah they did. And, yeah. Their and, first round. It's kind of like what is that thing like the seven the seven uh, degrees or phases of, of grief, you know. So, <laughs> the first one is like denial. You know, well, screw him. We don't care. He was of so, he was of right mind when he did it. So we're gonna keep showing it. Then after a while they realize, uh, not a good idea. Then after a while yeah. they get the feedback on the lines you know, which were used to audition about jumping off a bridge and blowing out your brains. And then Miss Cabbage is like sitting me down and saying, we got to re redo the film. And I'm like, yeah, well, we're getting rid of those lines because I am not going to reshoot those lines again. Okay, fine. We'll get rid of the lines. And I, and I don't want to reshoot this film another time. So we're not going to have an on-camera commentator. We're just going to have a guy narrate it. And we'll get somebody with a British accent that sounds like Richard Attenborough or something. So we get some extra credibility, but yeah, it was a, it was a big deal. We reshot the whole damn thing. Yeah. It was just easier because we didn't have a commentator Yeah, and nobody could replace Larry. Anyway, I remember yeah, that he was not replaceable. We tried to, we auditioned all kinds of people and Larry has so nailed it. Like yeah. Nobody well, the, else. Uh, just read David's letter. <laughs> plus, yeah, plus, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, plus the blue power suit had been stolen. Just to clarify this question. Well, we tried to have cutties. that suit made for other people and they look like shit in it. Nah, they Larry not. is like the fit model yeah. for the power suit. I know. It's just he, like a fact. And I will say this with some insult to Tommy Davis. Uh, sorry, Tommy Davis, but uh, Larry Anderson wears a suit much better than you. You look like a, yeah. you look like a, a Barney's mannequin, as someone said. Uh, just to clarify, in quite Cadiz, uh, did Larry escape one day before? Well, we we met at the party at the SP party, or so Larry, you had you told me you had just left the day before when we met at that party. What yeah. was the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. that that clarifies it. And I, you know, that's where where we met. The nice thing about that party, I just want to add, is. SPs never in second gen old guard it, free zoners everyone was welcome and it was an amazing party yeah. and and it went all day but that's where you know that's where I met a lot of people so and I, you know I, Jeffrey I think it, it, it is as surprised as you were or impressed to say this is the yeah. Asian guy what's he doing yeah. I was I walked there nervous about seeing the people who I'd been following online for a couple of years, <laughs> Corey Christman, you know, then yeah. all, these, all these people and, and I'm meeting them yourself. You know, I, yeah. I, I had seen you before. I'd seen you in lots of pictures and I knew who Karen was and, and all of this. And uh, so I'm getting to meet these you people huh. who, I, who I secretly admired because by that time, wow, I was out, I was out here and I was out, you know, physically and mentally, emotionally completely. I was gone. So I got to see and, 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 God, did we we did what, what do you call it the uh, the, the jet skis and, jet skiing. I couldn't think yeah. of the name jet skiing. Yeah. It's just a great time. I want to hear an interesting tidbit to this. Yeah, please. After that day, Mark was loading up his jet skis and everybody's parted. Um, a few people said, "Hey, we're going to go have dinner." A few of us in Santa Monica at some fancy hotel. I forget where it was, but it's uh, Santa Monica, Venice area between there overlooking the ocean, a really snazzy hotel. They had a great dining room. They said, Larry, you want to join us? I said, sure. So I went home, got out of my, you know, beach attire, got 
dressed nicely and, and showed up and brought my wife Mandy with me. And we walk in and I see, forget all was there that that came and they had a table over in the corner. So I'm walking over to join to join them. And as I go by, I look at another table on the other side of the room, and there's Spanky Taylor's sitting hmm. there with uh, some of the, So this was a complete coincidence. The Spanky was not involved in 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 this uh, you know beach. Wow. Thing. I don't even know if she knew we were all the other group was at the end of the room, you know. So and now I did I saw Spanky. I thought I saw Spanky, but I went and joined the table. And then I thought I I gotta go talk because background, Spanky's the person who got me in. Really? Uh, mm. all going clear, they'll know the name Spanky uh, Spanky Taylor. Uh, but she was uh, John Travolta, she got John in. I mean Spanky was a a, a, a quite a force at, at corralling people and getting them involved in Scientology. And she's a lovely lady. Well, she long since left but when she she said she saw me see her as i walked in and she of course did not know i'd gotten out the day prior and so she was she said she just cowered and went under the she said oh my god <laughs> oh my god how, how can i even look him in the face he, he's still in and then he you know and all of this so eventually i went over and said i think i saw spanky over there and he said really spanky's here now we got to bring her over i'm going yeah but you know She's no, she has to know you left. And so that we kind of sort <laughs> of that moment where Spanky saw me uh, just the day after I got out. She, well, that's she, like, she still says, Larry, oh, oh honey, I'm so sorry. I got to in, honey. <laughs> that's like universes aligning. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, I got a, I got a, we got a little note here from Cece. Yeah. It wants to know, please say what year is. Thanks. Yeah. Well, so I, what year, when was that when you guys had that whole meeting? I got out in 2009. That was when okay. the whole Tommy Davis thing happened. But in my mind, I was already working on that in 2007 to 2000. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it took me 15 years. I understand. Yeah. yeah and I, I was, understand. you know, when I had been in ethics and I'd been having meetings with OSA and Lynn yeah. Carney yeah. was a name that over at OSA <laughs> at that time. And they're trying to salvage me and, you know, salvage, oh, yeah. get you back in. And, and then I yeah. and it took, it took about two years of uh, them. Um, you know, finagling, yeah, so doing I, their thing. He's leaving, he's leaving, and he's gonna he's ask for his money back. <laughs> yeah, now, by the way, when I ask for my money back, I'm not asking for the 200,000 I'd already paid and, and taken those services. I I had prepaid for another $120,000 of the bridge, all the OT levels, and uh, so that was just sitting on account. And they weren't donations, which they call them donations, right? Sure. right. They were for specific services that had specific right. price tags. Right. Right. And, it's, and if you look at the L. Ron Hubbard policy on refunds, it says if somebody decides they want their money back, give it to them, kick them out the door, tell them they're never coming back. And that's how we deal with people who want and they'll never get. Yeah. Paid. Yeah. So I never felt like, hey, you know, if I ever leave Scientology, it's in writing. L. Ron Hubbard rules. Whatever he writes, that's it. I didn't get my money back. So I put the right. whole bridge down and. Uh, Right. Unfortunately, they just kept that money because. Yeah, I, yeah, I know, I know. I, I recently, uh, my former wife sent me a, an invoice and said, "Hey, do you, you should know we have forty eight thousand dollars on account at AOLA." And then I got a, I got a letter from Flag the other day saying that I had a three hundred fifty bucks or something on account for leftover from an L from the eighties. So they definitely associate these with specific things, yes. and they send you statements. So. I'm going to, and I, I think I might do some content on this, and, and, and Jeffrey's going to help me. I'm going to write a resignation letter and send it in with a request for a refund. So, so that we're really, really clear. Say, hey, by the way, here's my my resignation letter. You owe me this money, and if you don't send it to me per your own policy, uh, there'll be legal action. Just for the heck of it, at least I'll stop getting mail. Well, in that meeting with Tommy. He said, bring all of your accounts, all of your con statements, and show us what you have on account on each org. Right. We'll go over it all. And so, so it sounded like we were on the path to, uh, they were right. going to get money. And, and, just, I, and I told him, go listen to this. This is an awesome tape. And he says, I said, all I'm going to do, I'll take the money, and I'm going to disappear. That's it. And he right. said, well, well, if I disappear, that's fine. But how about we get you to sign? And I said, well, what do you want me to sign? They said, well, then you're not going to attack the church. You're not going to put up YouTube videos. You're not going to call up Jason Begay and give him some information, you know. <laughs> and I said, I'm not going to do that. I have First Amendment. So they said, well, unless you do that, we, you know, we don't have to give you that money back. And 
So, but so I brought in all my accounts and it had all itemized exactly what I had, which of course they have on account too. I don't know why they're asking me to bring it. It's all there on you know each org that I had money at. But I don't know what the, their game was in asking me to bring in. Their- yeah. So the you have the recording on the transcript of the of the, of this meeting, and maybe we'll go on and we'll play some of it and, and talk about it. All right. <laughs> I think people would really enjoy that. Uh, so, uh, okay. So oh, I've got some more pictures from orientation. Oh yeah. 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 So this is the chapel set. That's a little behind the scenes. This was, uh, not shot at gold. This was shot in that crappy little studio because I could recognize it. You can tell from the, 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 the steel truss ceiling that was really crappy. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Then there's you and Michael Roberts. My, you might remember him from Rain Man. He had a feature part of there. He's a very good ac- actor who's a Scientologist, who's also a shill uh, as a he, he raises money for the IS. If anybody's old enough to remember, he was the co-star in the Beretta TV. Oh series. right, oh, yeah, right, that's right. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah. Rooster. His name was Rooster. He was the pimp. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was just in that he pimp, was you know, Rooster, that. Rooster the pimp. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, Look at my hair. It's like plastered. They they ran out of hairspray every week. <laughs> from, uh, well, yeah, they always they they really made a big deal on hair continuity. They didn't want your hair to change from shot to shot. There you go. There you go. You're standing in front of the doors. The classic yeah. Larry Anderson. Oh door. yeah, that's a perfect shot. Yeah. Yeah. You can almost see the. That that suit isn't black there on the shoulder, yeah. a little highlight. And I just oh, wanted to add in the Scientology contract, it does mention the triangle and the double S symbol. Right. So you, this is this is the Scientology corporate uh, global um, wealth extraction scam using its <laughs> symbols yeah. that are referenced. Oh, no, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And uh, it's also mandated by Scientology but, policy. But, but look at L- Larry's handout, like he's welcoming you in. Yeah. But there's well, also look at his face. It's like it's your decision to make. <laughs> yeah, that's come. Right. Yeah. It's a re- it's a really interesting psychological yeah. thing because you're being welcomed, and yet you have to make the decision. And there's a stern look. So psychologically, this is a really interesting scene. Uh, uh, interesting still for me, because there's some some reservation Larry has. And yet you have to move forward into this new world. Right. And the top knowing you know, that the coral area is jumping off a bridge or blowing out your brain. Right. And it was, I just wanted to add too that the the the, the tie pin and the tie are so nineties. Yeah. This uh, is true. I, yeah. This I is mean, true. this is really a great look for yeah. the nineties. Yeah. Uh and so yeah, this this is this was part of the tension when he delivers the monologue. Right, and, and it's all Absolutely. one shot, five minutes straight. Yeah, it was the same an actor. Do you remember? Yes, go ahead, because that's the one thing I really wanted to. When I'm watching you and Jeffrey the other night, I'm going, "Oh, if I wish I was in on this discussion to to talk about what it was like from my side of the camera." Yeah, what was it like? Do tell. Do tell. Yeah. Well, Mitch, you had a question. We went through so much film because you know. Oh. You've got like uh, you've got a thousand foot mag on the camera, a magazine. It's holding uh, that's about ten minutes of film, and that scene is a little over five minutes. <laughs> so, and there's no cuts in the entire thing. So, every if you do a perfect scene, you're wasting four hundred. You got to then, you know, take the four hundred foot what we would call a short end, and you'd store it for some other movie, some other scene. And then you put another a mag in, and it was incredibly expensive. You're talking like a dollar a foot by the time. So it's like, you know, to buy it printed and process it. So you're talking about ten thousand dollars a magazine. It was really insane. So, uh, Mitch, just a quick question before, because I want to hear Larry's side of the delivering the monologue. How much total film footage of 35 millimeter film did it take to shoot on that scene? No, no, the whole, the whole film. The, 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 the probably, whole, the we film. probably went through a million feet of film. You went through a million feet of film? Yeah, we probably went through a million feet of Holy film. Holy Zenu, that is a yeah. load of <laughs> yeah. film. Yeah. A million yeah. feet. Oh, yeah, that's, look, Ridley Scott was notorious 
for shooting a million feet of film for a 30 second commercial. So yeah. we were not the most extravagant okay, people I in just, the world, but that, that's a lot of film. Yeah. Now, okay. now all of that didn't get processed, right? Cause you'd say that take, we're not going to process. Oh no, absolutely. No, 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 no. It all yeah. got processed. It's just, yeah. A, yeah. Like, no, so because <laughs> yeah, it, it, we might call a, uh, we would call that a cut and print, which would be a good take. Everything got processed and everything got screened. It, it was just, there were certain takes yeah. that were noted as good takes. Oh. Oh, okay. yeah. but, but Larry, can you take us into that five minute monologue? Because that's the central thing. How do you prepare for that? How do you rehearse? Do you have a line code? Yeah, take you... us inside the blue suit. Yeah. Would you? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, this is this is a, a fun thing. Well, in terms of preparation, I, I, this of course was the audition material I had. So I I knew right. when I got cast, and we went into you know pretty intensive shooting. This got shot close to the end of the uh, the end of uh, the shooting of. The, the film orientation, so it was always hanging in the background that you're going to get to the shooting, the, the big, uh, the big um, monologue. Um, so you know, I'd been able to live with it, and I'd go home and re read it over, and pretty soon I, I knew where and I'd be marking the script. I want to hit this this word because that's a really important you know accent word and whatever I'm saying. So I had it all pretty well um, mapped out, but. Stepping on a set with the lights on and all the extras that are suddenly behind you crisscrossing and going through the doors. And this was a nightmare. I mean, it was fun. I enjoyed it as an actor. It was still fun, but it was a nightmare because, as Mitch has, has rightly pointed out earlier, it's a one shot piece. It had, and, and, and I guess that was a dictum from uh, from Miscavige, too, I, or maybe not, but it, it, it had to be Larry enters through the, I think I came through the doors. Yeah, I did. And, uh, or I'm discovered in right front of the doors. I forget where, where it starts. Uh, but, and I do this slow walk as the camera is going through all its marks, tracking with me and backing up as we get further away from the doors. Uh, and all that's happening while I'm talking. And, and behind me, as Mitch explained in the last one, the extras are, are precise moments when they have to come through so they're not distracting from what I'm saying. And then behind me, after the last guy goes, the doors kind of close behind me, but they're out of focus. But we're in a tight shot, you don't see that. So all of this has to be timed so impeccably. And then uh, I would, you know, finish with the powerhouse ending, the last, uh, you know, hit you between the eyes thing. And then I would step off camera like this and just walk away. And then the, you saw just the doors there. And then both doors would open toward camera like this, perfectly timed doors. And then the words welcome would appear, uh, I guess they would be added in post afterwards, uh, the, the words welcome. But those doors ruined more friggin' takes yeah, than you yeah. can possibly imagine after yeah. five minutes and everybody's going, Larry's nailing this one. It's perfect. He hit that thing exactly. Right. The focus was exactly right where we hadn't been able to get it in the previous five takes. The guys pull, you know, manually adjusting focus uh, to the exact distance as, as I'm moving to it. And then one door would open there's two guys each managing a piece of wire attached to the bottom of a door and they have to do it together and pull from opposite sides yes, and one door would go like this and another one would go like that and let you go yeah. cut <laughs> back to one back to yeah. one. here we go again it was like oh my god the doors so there was a lot of like yelling going on between mitch and the guys yeah no it was crazy i mean you i tell you the way hubbard wrote it it was about 50 shots yeah that yeah but he wrote it i talked about this the other day some of them were just your yeah. eyeballs yeah. like he wrote that those lines were supposed to be delivered just looking at the actor's eyes yeah and it was really stupid so i shot a test i showed him a sketch i said look this is stupid it'll never work i never i didn't say it's stupid because lrh wrote it yeah. hubbard wrote it but i said you know the the other way you would do something like that you know larry is you 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 you'd block it out so the actor would have turns and on the turns yeah. you'd cut yeah. to a different yeah. actor but then it looks kind of like, you know, like news or a game show or kind of like I said, the only way this is going to work is it has to be one take. Yeah, and it's it has to be you know, and, you know it's yeah. Just, it really it. has to be a performance, like the yeah. performance of it. It's not a trick of editing. It's not anything else. It's 100 percent. There I was spilling my genius on the floor. <laughs> 
being Lenny Riefenstahl for Scientology because it really, the only thing about it that worked, you know, the, the, the film we redid, which is just a narrator, it doesn't have those lines and it's much more of an, inf like an infomercial that, that features a lot of yeah. Miscavige's real estate. Yeah. It's much more like that, but it's, God, I'd love to see. I'd love to see. <laughs> I I'd love to get it. I mean, it would be great. I mean, they they should just send it to me. I mean, if the thing's so damn bulletproof, why would yeah. they care who showed it? If yeah. it's, but you know, I have to say that the film was designed to be a locational. The opening of the film, a locational in Scientology is where you point to a person, uh, you point something out to a person, you tell them to look at it, and you do that over and over with different things in the environment. That helps the person come to present time. The idea being that the person has a certain amount of their attention stuck on the past. So Hubbard designed this film to be a locational. It starts in the turbulent asteroid zone and you don't know where you are. And then all of a sudden the earth comes in and the music becomes steady. And he's, he's like saying, look at that earth. Good. Move over to that earth. Good. And you go by a satellite. <laughs> yeah, and you at one point you travel past a satellite and he's saying, look, communication is good. It will stabilize you. We're hmm. modern. We're the thing. And it was all very, very like subliminally designed to manipulate the audience. Right. Yeah, I saw that when I watched it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was pretty yeah, amazing. <laughs> yeah, no, somebody I, said here, I I just want to just take a, take a moment here. Sure. So Luke Manel said, is David Miscavige really a midget? I can't, I can't really attest to him in terms of if he has like some genetic defect, which we defect, which we call midgetism or something, but I can show you this picture Larry provided that I, I, <laughs> think, <laughs> I think it kind of answers the question. Here's a picture, a photo with Larry who's six, four with David and Shelly. And I don't know what is going on with Dave's hair. Do you have any idea? I tell this, you. I'd seen him at an, a lot of galas. Was at Celebrity Center Gala in 1996. And I'd seen him in many of them, and and uh, and many since. And he had his normal Dave hair, but this one, I think he might have been going through a midlife crisis. Was looking in the mirror and says, "You know, I got to hip up my act, so I'm going to wear it down in bangs." And I think, yeah, he's and he's kind of kind of got this kind of like a flip, like a page yeah. boy flip. It's yeah. really bizarre. To, to, to me, it kind of looks like poodle hair. Like really yeah, soft was, little hair. Because when it I does. when I saw that with Larry, I th I thought that well, a couple things. One, uh, it, it's 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 he's looking uh, weird. He just looks weird, you know. Because I think yeah, he very strange. Conscious. Well, have you ever done gone out for an event and you realize your hair is wrong? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing it right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, or it, that it, you're overdressed or underdressed. It's sort of like uh, uh, it's not happens to be anywhere long hair. I'm so old hippie, but it's sort of like. Oh man, my my poodle hair is not going to cut it. Yeah, Shelly looks I, fine. By the way, I, I found Shelly Miscavige. She's right there on my right, so now I know. Yeah. What she is. How now? <laughs> where was the where was the photo taken at, uh, Larry? In the parking lot at uh, where the at Celebrity Center during oh, the, they the, the, gala. the gala. They have every yeah. year. They turn the parking lot into a nightclub, which they do a good job of. It's beautiful it's amazing now, was there ever any larry when you were in the church and you were a celebrity from the orientation film was there ever any resentment from seorg or david miscavige or how was it to be such a high profile because you're the guy you're the guy in orientation yeah. and you're in an org do you get special treatment or do people are you are you just treated like a regular scientologist after no, just, no. no. Well, Larry, Larry was a superstar. He was like, not not so much at Celebrity Center because you, know, you could turn around and there's you know, Lisa Marie Presley or you know all kinds of celebrities. Yeah. Yeah. There. Um, you know, a lot of people say, "Hey, great job! Thank you for your contribution or whatever." Yeah. At Celebrity Center, but the fun thing was, I did a lot of international traveling and even around the United States or whatever. I'd get to somewhere like Washington. I'd go into the founding church just. to I just walk in, you know, and just see. Hmm. see if he goes, that guy looks like the guy in Oregon. <laughs> yeah, just just to yeah, see what yeah. would happen. So I did it in Melbourne, Australia, and I did it in hmm. the founding Oregon, in Seattle. I did it in you know Celebrity Center in New York. I did it in Barcelona. It was just kind of fun to walk into orgs and unannounced and just see. I walked in with a buddy once. We were traveling, went to the Grand Prix and all of that stuff in Monaco. So we 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 hit every org and every place. <laughs> Just, just to see if you know and it was kind of fun sometimes you just see them right whispering you know because i would just literally walk in the lobby what, what's what happens here and i you know i would pretend like i was a newbie or something 
Well, I, I can tell you from my perspective, when you left and it was becoming apparent, we were really going to have to make the film because it was really a problem. And I remember Miscavige throwing one of his tantrums saying, you know, we're not going to hire another Scientologist to do this because mm. uh, God damn it. I'm not making another person into a star. We really? made Larry. <laughs> oh yeah. He's like, he hated the idea that Larry would go to flag or Larry would go anywhere and they would, people would come up to him and they say, Hey, you were the guy in that film. I mean, this happened to another, a number of actors in Scientology. Uh, Larry, particularly because that film was not a yeah. lot of the big high end films we did were shown at events, but that one was shown at events. And then everybody was required to see it. So it was really universal, hmm. but it was, it was not a wanted thing. Like uh, Miscavige was happy to just do the whole thing over with an unseen person. Right. Yeah. So somebody had a comment here was, uh, uh, where, where, where is this? No, it, 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 uh, hold on. <laughs> I thought you were talking about me. Good, I keep trying to fix that. It didn't stay no, there. no, and Mitch Brisker, yeah, that photo. Uh, it, yeah, there, I guess I, I I didn't disagree, but I appreciate the comment. Oh, and Mitch Brisker, yeah. that photo is midlife crisis, as Larry says. Yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. I don't know what's going on with it, but I, I okay, midlife crisis is fine, but Dave wasn't even in midlife oh, then. Yeah, I know. This would have been what, 96, so... I don't know how old that is. You know? Well, the '96, I was so he was he would have been forty about around forty six. Yeah. Well, really? Well, I think so because it, it, in '96, I was yeah, that's right, yeah, because he's okay. about ten years younger than I am. So that's how yeah, I he's born that. in 1960. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So he would have been, yeah he's yeah, three exactly. three years younger than me. Yeah. Exactly. And and a bit shorter. Uh, yeah. so yeah, so anyway, we have some more photos here. This, oh, well, this one we're not. Oh, no. This was a film for this is another film that we're gonna do. I'm gonna do this with Mark Headley, and Larry's gonna come on. <laughs> I didn't, uh, role. <laughs> yeah, so it's another focused. one. Of, Very this different one of, from yeah, this is one where Larry plays. You talk <laughs> about like, I do not believe in, in typecasting, right? Like, you know, I, I cast Larry, uh, well, he he was the one who got cast. Uh, in orientation where he's just this incredibly powerful commentator. Yeah. And then we hired him in this film, which is called uh, how to possession, how to set up a session in the e-meter. And he played a sort of bumbling auditor uh, who'd, who'd given the, the King son of a, of a fictional African country, given him a bad session. And now they were being kicked out of Africa and Hubbard was going to show up as, you know, as the white savior that he is, was going to show up in Africa and like save the day. Auditing this, area silence. Yeah. Yeah. This is made up everything. The country country's called, Mahali, Arafiki, the language you're seeing on the screen there is completely made up. And, and the, the location <laughs> research, which came from, uh, which L. Ron Hubbard uh, solicited from Lenny Riefenstahl. That's a whole nother story. We'll talk about that later. But his, the, the Nazi propagandist, it, 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 Hubbard yeah. had sent her a letter because he knew she was in Africa doing studies of uh, African natives. And she yeah. sent him photos. And anyway, it's a whole long story. We'll get into that. This is one I, did, of, uh, I just want to add a postscript mention. Please, I'm going to go on. over, I, you know, Karen and I live right down the street from Griffith Park. Griffith Park. Right, right, right. So I'm going to go into Griffith Park and I'm going to take a sign and dress like that. <laughs> auditing area, silence. Would you people please shut up? This yeah. is an auditing and see what, right. I should just Kotuko do that with some TikTokers. <laughs> yeah. Kotuko Sima, stop. We're yeah, on. we used to, this is a funny thing. We, <laughs> you know, this is something Mark Headley and I have talked about that a yeah. lot of, a lot of sort of uh, sayings that became really famous uh, among Scientologists. So we would say that, like if somebody was making a lot of noise, we would say that. Could, what is it saying? Kotoko uh, 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 which is just nothing. It's just completely made up. Uh, <laughs> okay, but this anyway. was, we built, this is a whole story. We built an entire African village out on the yeah. ranch where those, unfortunately those kids were living like Laura FM. Yeah. And uh, the, this, the set, by the way, sat out there for months maybe even over a year and it was rained on it turned it was rattlesnake infested and they had those kids from the ranch they sent them out there mm -hmm. to tear it down so that's terrible i did not know that at the time it was really a horrible thing so oh yeah here we had an elephant i think it, didn't oh yeah yeah we brought some real animals out there we brought like zebras and oh yeah no we we did that yeah yeah we did that michael again at the in the chapel yeah no, another shot of michael in the chapel and here's oh, god and a monkey no, yeah, this this is this is a great line. Um, 
you know, I could probably uh, hold on one second. Let me see if I can do this. Uh, in, in my script. Oh, you have a script, the script. Yeah. Oh, cool yeah. He's that? actually got the script. Wow. I'm like jealous. I'll, uh, I'll uh, run it off for you. Mitch. No, it's, yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, I'd like to get a copy too as well. What, now, what is this um, Jesus or Buddha or whoever well, it the is? the point is, okay, so the point what? is, the point is, here's the point of yeah. the scene. This is a deep piece of propaganda. I'm going to see if I can find it in the original film. So what Hubbard is saying is, uh, you know, Hubbard was, he pushed against Darwinism and he pushed against yeah. mainstream religion. And he claimed to be what's called a dualist. And a dualist is somebody that believes that the, the reality, that the, the universe is made up of things that are seen and unseen. It's neither material and neither strictly material nor strictly spiritual. And so he's making this claim in orientation that science never disproved the existence of God. They just said there isn't one. And this is a way of him kind of co-opting the discussion about religion. So this is a really key concept in orientation. And as you explained, what, five nights ago, that it, as you shot it, he was sort of translucent. Uh, God, yeah, he was transparent. And then he put the monkey down on the ground and the monkey ran off. And put it yeah. And the, the monkey is obviously meant to uh, symbolize mankind. And so, but Hubbard is weird because he was always saying science says we evolved from monkeys. And yet here he is showing <laughs> that maybe something, uh, you know, that maybe there is some kind of God putting a monkey on the ground. So the whole thing was really confusing, but it was, uh, it was specifically meant uh it was specifically meant to, to sort of co-opt this discussion about religion and existence and make Hubbard look like a, uh, you know, the, the guy in charge, the guy who really knew what he was talking about. Yeah. I don't know what the hell I did with the film. I sort of, but do you have the line there in the script, right, Larry? I do, but I wouldn't, I mean, I, I, I don't have a, uh, a search Function, yeah, yeah, it. no, it's fine. No. I, 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 don't worry about it. It would be like, uh, I don't, I don't I know. I already made it a PDF. I could search, but I didn't. Right. Yeah, I don't know where it is. I had it somewhere, and then I lost it. Oh well. So I'm not going to be able to play it. But let's move on here. Uh, so, okay, so for any of you Sterling uh, Tompkins fans, that would be Sterling right center frame, uh, being wow. an extra on the set. You know, Sterling and I have talked about how. You know, for staff, the Sea Work staff at the International Base at Gold, the best place to be was on a film set because nobody could mess with you. You know, you couldn't, nobody's going to rip you out of there and send you to ethics. You, you could have this whole day of just, you know, uh, your only job was to sit there and like look good at this. Anyway, I, I was in a lot of films with Sterling. And, and there just, you are. I just want to point out um, to jump in, you can see the marks down on the floor. Right. And so to block it out, how long did it take? I mean, you had to block out every, how many scenes total? And, you know, there's a lot of blocking. Oh, out, my God. Out yeah, no, there were tons of them. Yeah, I mean, we would usually do a few re rehearsal days yeah. to kind of work a lot of this stuff out. It doesn't take that long. I mean, I, I work fast. I have a very clear image of yeah. what we want. All... And uh, so, yeah, it's really quick. I mean, I would have everything planned out ahead of time. I know where the camera was going and blah, blah, blah. So, so they just hit their marks, easy. do the scene and you're done. Yeah. And then when, you know, when, when, when we weren't, I mean, the sound people up there were just so picky about everything, but in a longer shot, when we're seeing their feet, they would, they would just paste felt onto the bottom of their shoes. And then, uh, when we were close up, they would put down sound blankets and put uh, their marks question, on them. Mitch, uh, did you have to shoot this in clear sound? Which was absolutely, a, I mean, Elron absolutely. Hubbard. You know, so just to interject, Elron uh, Hubbard or Elron Hubbard had a clear sound technology, and David Miscavige has a vanity patent for a microphone. So this was shot in clear right. sound. Right. Yeah, this yeah. was shot in clear sound, and that clear sound is the sound technology. It's not a bad uh, type of sound technology. I mean, it it uses a bunch of extra circuits and filters to kind of make sound a little bit cleaner. You don't yeah. need it to be that clean because you're going to mix it and do all kinds. You you know all sound in a movie it's incredible. It gets it gets recorded really clean and then it all gets dirtied up. Okay, so it's kind of a funny thing. But the problem with clear sound is it's a gigantic rig. It's like half the size of a refrigerator, 
And Miscavige tried to get Hollywood via Tom Cruise to adopt this thing. I think they used it on clear and uh, far and away, the Tom Cruise film. They, he Tom got them, the production company. Did you ever hear about this, Jeffrey? Or oh, Larry, yeah. did you ever hear about this? What That he got it used on, on, on uh, far and away? Mm -hmm. Uh but the the sound people they rebelled. They were like, "There's no fucking way we're gonna like use this gigantic thing." And then, because the diff there, there wasn't a big difference between oh, a Nagra tape recorder that you could carry on your shoulder and this gigantic thing called clear sound. And then when when sound went digital, then all of those things became obsolete, and there was no reason not to just carry around a, a location recorder. Uh, you know, even eventually. Yeah, we they they kind of stopped using clear sound, but Miscavige, you know, he got thrown off the set of Days of Thunder uh, for making too big a stink about them not using uh, clear sound. I mean, what's his name? Don Simpson, who you know is no longer with us, he kind of snorted a little bit too much uh, white powder, and his heart exploded. Mitch, can but, I just take a, a yeah? Sorry, I'm a ass bagging. Yeah, go ahead. No, 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 no. I'm the, a clear sound. Uh, if I can just take the whole screen, I have it up on my blog. If you want to just put clear sound. Okay. Um, okay. Now Tom Cruise insisted on it. In, th in fact, <laughs> yeah. one point in an interview, he said, fuck you. Okay. I want the best. And I have the article. There's is this on far and away? Is that what it is? Uh, well, I just had a picture of him. I don't remember which yeah, film. Was it, the interview of the vampire. Yeah, that picture yeah, is, sorry. but I think the film oh, he's talking about. Oh, I see. Yeah. But, you know, here, here, here's what it says. The Church of Scientology says, Ron wanted you to receive his communication in perfectly clear and understandable form. Like no one had ever done that before in films, right? And so it basically, Tom did an interview where he said a whole all the sound people in Hollywood form a cult. This is a 1992 Rolling Stone interview <laughs> here. And he, he persuaded insane. far and away to do clear sound. Now the quote in, in uh, italics bold here, this is what Cruz says. Okay. His eyes, this is Tom Cruise. His eyes are dark and gleaming lasers has his back. No one usually gives a shit about sound. He says sharply, even before his discovery of clear sound, he pressed the Dolby system on his sound recorders. With a lot of them, it just pisses them, them off, he says. And I say, fuck you, okay? I want the best. I simply found a system that's better. All I want is clarity on the voice. I don't think that's asking for so much, is it? And yeah, yeah. So, so Tom, really, this was a big deal. So I'm. this is a little parenthetical, but I just wanted to, uh, I'll take this off. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's fantastic. Also, we have a comment here yeah. from Orexican Messler. That says uh, clear sound is listed on, on the endings of Far and Away. So oh. I remember when Tom was in pre-production of Far and Away, he brought Ron Howard up to gold and turned him around. I mean, I was part of that tour. So, wow. uh, yeah, and it, it was like uh, he he really tried to impress him with all that, all that crazy stuff. And, and there's nothing per se wrong with clear sound, but it does not fit the workflow of a of film production. It it it, it demands. Unreal. It's yeah. very disruptive to the to the actual workflow. So in that sense, mm. it's not a good system. Yeah. And now anyway, sure, sure, sure podcasting mics have taken over. So back to the film. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, what do we have here? So let me see if we got any more Love these juicy photos. stuff. Yeah. So this is uh this is yeah. So the makeup department, that would be Sherry at the time, Sherry Morehead, that would be oh, that, that's Sarni. Sorry. No, is Sarni. that is that Sarni? Yeah, I guess that would be. I guess Sherry yeah. was already gone. Yeah. She got booted out of there. She got in a lot of trouble. She gave Miscavige a bad haircut, and and she got sent to the RPF and then kicked out of the Sea Org. This is before he was bringing in ten thousand dollar a day haircutters and, and and hairdressers and makeup people. This is back when he was using staff. So there, you're cleaning off the the power suit and getting your hair done. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's a lot of there's yeah. a lot of dogs running in there, so we got to get the dog hair off of yeah. his, off of his suit. Oh yeah, this is oh, Lee Purcell. Like that shot. Yeah, yeah. This is Lee Purcell, who, by the way, is a very talented uh, actress actor. Yeah. She's been in Scientology forever, and she actually is the emotion. The uh, she's the female lead and the emotional center on a film that I've spoken a lot about, which is Big Wednesday. And yeah. if you've not seen Big Wednesday, I recommend that you see it. And some Lee is one of these people that I think the attention that they put on to Scientology when they should have been putting it on their career 
had a negative effect on their career because they, they and it, Larry, you could speak to that, but, but artists and actors in Scientology, they become convinced that their pathway to success lies through their spiritual improvement. Now, yeah. is this, this is, I'm sorry. Uh, Go ahead. Is this, is this L. Ron Hubbard's office, Larry? No, this, uh, yes. Well, it, it, yeah, yeah. It, it's supposed to be, it's a stat, but it's supposed to be the office. Right. Yeah. yeah. And her part, her part, she's what's called the L. Ridge Com, right? Okay. Either that or public executive. I don't yeah, know. No, I think, no, she's yeah. the, the L. Ridge Com because okay. she's talking about, she's explaining to the public, like every, organization even gold i mean gold has i think three offices for l ron hubbard which is crazy but every organization even these ones where public don't come to have offices of l ron hubbard and so lee is explaining the, the reason they're there is because he's worshiped like an idol and everybody thinks he's going to come back and yeah. like genuinely but what lee is saying well the reason we have an office for l ron hubbard is to show that we are true to the works and the the whatever you know, that this organization stays stays true to the works of L. Ron Hubbard, which doesn't really explain, well, we didn't show it in this film, but it doesn't really explain why they have an ashtray and a pack of camels on the <laughs> desk, but, but, you know, and they have a glass of water with, like, saran wrap over it, but it's pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah, so um, that's that, that's Leap or Cell. Anything else, anybody? Okay, so we have... Uh, I think that's I think that's pretty much it on the photos. I think Larry, I think I covered them all, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, yeah, I think you did. Yeah. Um, I, by the way, the pictures that we're looking at were beautiful stills that were gifted to me by David Miscavige in a yeah. gorgeous yeah. Uh, hardcover um, rosewood wood um, um, photo album with all these pictures in, and it said a little plaque on the front that said orientation larry anderson it was very nice wow. so uh, I, I pulled all these out and scanned them so we could look at them today they were you know they were an actual gift from from dm yeah so, they're beautiful <clears throat> shots thank you larry yeah yeah for sure i was so thrilled to see these i was like oh my god uh let me just take this out okay there we are okay good so uh i think we, we uh does anybody have anything else this is uh can I go ahead, Laura? Addendum to the to the last speech. Uh, when you mentioned we'd re, we'd shot it twice, that that studio where when you watch the film and you're seeing that speech, it was shot in Hollywood, as as Mitch said, on just off Santa Monica Boulevard near the unemployment office. But prior to that, a few months earlier, we shot it at another studio up near uh, in Silmar. Up yeah, real, Mexico, really. Right? Like a shithole. Mountain. You know, there was, and, and it was a not a not yeah. a very posh or so. Apparently, we spent all of the time shooting this once prior with all of the same, you know, extras going in. We didn't have those big doors with the timing and all of that, but we thought we got it, we nailed it, and it looked right. good. But, I mean, it was good from all aspects, except that it, it didn't pass the David Muster, David no. uh, Cabbage. Uh, 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 yeah, area for posh and elegant and you know impressive. Yeah. got to build a new set somewhere else and do it all over again. So. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. It was pretty yeah. crazy. Earn some more film. Yeah, I had completely forgotten about that. I think I had buried that because it was so traumatic. The yeah. fact that we had to do it again. That studio, by the way, we we that was one of our main studios that we rented while they were building the castle. It was out, yeah, near Silmar, and it was. Uh, we were shooting something. I remember the, when I met Jason Bouquet, the first time he ever I ever met him, he came out to that studio. He did some little thing in a film, and that's the early his early. He'd just been in Scientology, and he was so gung ho. I mean, the thing about I just have to say about Jason because I'm always reminded of him when we talk about these Scientology films. It's the one thing nobody could ever accuse Jason of was being like half in or a dilettante. This guy shamed everybody in terms of being uh, a dedicated Scientologist. He did so much training. He went all the way up to being a OT at least three or four and a, and a class five trained auditor. And then he looked at the whole thing and he went, nah, I'm calling bullshit. So, uh, you know, that's something about nobody can say, well, he was like a half in Scientologist. Yeah, sure. Yeah. In fact, when I, I was at an audition uh, at a studio in Hollywood for something and, and I, I saw, this was after Jason had left 
and I was then contemplating leaving. And so I saw him at the audition. I think we were auditioning for the same part or whatever it was. And he said, Lair, how you doing? And we had since been on the free ones together when he was in and, and, and right. friends shot many films with, with Mitch together. And I said, gee, Jason, you know, he's wondering how he's going to react because he's out. Right. He knows I'm in. So he says, how are you, Larry? And I said, well, not so good, Jason. He said, what are you doing? <laughs> I think I'm getting about ready to do a Jason Begay here in Bay. Yeah. He said, yeah. oh, tell me about it. So we yeah. walked out of the audition, walked across the street. And he said, well, what are you waiting for? And I said, well, yeah. I, I got to sort it all out in my head. And he says, let's call right now. Let's go Let's go call him. Let's call yeah. New York right now. And I said, what do, you, what do you mean? He says, no, come on. Let's get in the car. We'll drive over to Headley's house. We'll, yeah. we'll get on the phone and we'll call and, and tell him you're leaving. And I said, okay. <laughs> That's wow. amazing. It's a great story. Yeah, bless his heart. Jason dials the number and says, yeah, I want to talk to whoever it was. And he says, this is Jason. And they uh, and they said, what are you doing, Colin? He says, wait a minute. I'm here with Larry Anderson. He wants to, and he hands me the phone. And he's like, I guess I'm leaving. So that was yeah, wow. exactly, exactly. <laughs> you just built the fire on me to make the, you know, to actually move and, and take action. Yeah, guy. yeah, yeah. He's he is. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm. I would love to have him on, but I, I think he's he's uh, with his commitments with NBC. I don't think those would those would yeah. work very well. I'll put a link to this video. If you've got, I don't have his email because yeah. I don't even know. Where yeah, he is. yeah. I'll, I'm sure. I know. Uh, yeah, I, I, I know some people who have talked to him. We're trying. We we tried him to get him to come on, but I, I just. Uh, yeah, he, and he, I get him. Yeah, no, I could imagine uh, uh, Jason doing that, Larry. Like, let's do it now. Yeah. yeah, what are you waiting for? Yeah. I mean, Jason. So, Jason well, what are you going to do about it? You gotta, you know, yeah, I mean, so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, some of the best. I just Jason was one of the funniest people that I ever met in terms of yeah. telling stories. He was just and just to interject to anyone under the radar lurking. There's no time like right now today to call. Yeah, design. yeah. Even if you're worried about your your job you and your relatives, yeah. Yeah. all of that is gonna. You're just forestalling the the inevitable. Like I, you know, I realized, you know, I didn't speak up for a year and a half because there's people at Gold that I really care about, Sea members, and I thought, do I really want to go out and spit in their ice cream? And then I thought, well, wait a minute, you know, being silent it only helps the abuser. It never mm -hmm. helps the abused. So you know, yeah, exactly. One, two, three. What are you waiting for? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Amazing. Exactly. Anyway, um, it's been great fun. Thanks for having you know having me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So listen, I got a few questions here. I yeah. just want to run through these real quick. Can uh, we see some of the film, Mitch? Are we going to see any of the film? Yeah, I just, we can. I'm, I just I'm want to see to... a few, few little things for old times. Yeah, hold sake. on, hold on, hold on. Uh, I'm trying yeah. to find it. Uh, I, 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 did, I did this horrible thing. I'm usually incredibly well you organized. To... Do you have a copy of the? It says add to stage. Oh, on the film? Yeah, it's if you look at the. Below we have yeah, a bunch yeah, yeah, of yeah. yeah it just it's on the right. Oh, is it stage. on there? Is it on? on yeah, there? I, I can add it. To oh, stage. but I think that's, that's. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, but I think that here I'm going to turn down this. Down the yeah. I think this is just the opening. It's just the intro. Oh, uh, okay. Didn't know. It's not. Uh, yeah, well, for it's people who haven't seen it, yeah. Well, you know what I do have? I mean, I don't think we want to get into showing. Too much There's a lot of voiceover here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I, I stopped the voiceover. But uh, let me just show you one thing. I'll pull uh, that off the stage. Larry, while Mitch is, while Mitch is getting his files, his data... Yeah. What, yeah, when exactly. you what's yeah. the opening what's the opening scene in the film? Do you walk on from left or right stage? How, how does the film begin? Are you front well, and center? I don't right recall. After that, right after that, and you hear my voice, and and they start showing the pictures of the various organizations and all of that, and then finally it it it, it cuts to me just standing in in you know kind of in a limbo shot. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I, against I, blue, yeah. against that blue with yeah, uh, yeah that 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 blue background. You know, where then, I was holding in that shot i think that's you know that's one of the opening and then i say yeah it's probably three minutes into that film is when you first yeah see. yeah and then you have the uh that great line oh here it is i have it right here you know what i wanted to say something that i was talking to uh larry uh before the interview about meeting uh, norman starkey right and you know i want to ask him his experience about norman 
And one thing that Norm, one of Norman's lines is such a crack up. He said, uh, uh, Mr. Hubbard was fully professional in 28 fields. Oh. Oh, sorry about that. Is it, yeah, let me see. Yeah, let me finish. No, 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 Please, Mitch. no it says, went on all by itself. Okay, I didn't do that, I swear. Right. Okay, it was a ghost. So, yeah. no, what what I what was a, cr a crack up because Elrond Harvard thought he was everything. He, but Norman says so, so sincerely and insistently to you, Larry, Mr. Hubbard was fully professional in 28 fields. <laughs> Only 28. <laughs> yeah, I, <was laughs> thought, I thought that was such bullshit because if you, it's like, but we he's, counted them all and then we wrote them down and counted them as 20. <laughs> but, but it was such a charming scene because it's obviously yeah. bullshit yeah. on Norman's part. But you were saying that, that Norman, who, who who could be quite rude to people, uh, mm -hmm. he was very, very polite to you. Oh, he was a sweetheart to me. I, yeah, I get, yeah. I get you. yeah, I'm sure he had the capability of being, you know, a hard ass. But of course, yeah. He, Film yeah. and he was we were working together and he was just uh, he was just excited about being he was really sweet he had told some fun jokes yeah you know, he had a little dirty yeah joke hey uh, I, I found I found the film oh wow here let me do this here but you know I'm gonna turn the I'm gonna turn the sound uh, I'm gonna turn can I just can you okay. hear the sound just a little yeah. oh yeah yeah that's fine okay so here we are here's the asteroid belt. It's a very crappy. Uh, and we'll this show is the scary opening. and dark. Yeah. So now this is your this is your life. It's very chaotic. You're lost in the dark. You're going to die any second. This is basically what Hubbard is saying to you. Like this is your life right now. And then all of a sudden. Whoa, whoa! Yeah. This is where you want to be. This is where Scientology is. Yeah, T G. Yeah. Prison planet. Yeah. And the you know the the titles are so lugubrious. They're just so long. They just go on forever. And I remember the event. You probably remember this, Larry. The the applause was lasted for so. Now here's now here's oh, yeah. the satellite. Here's the satellite. Yeah. Okay. This is the we have technology. We have technology here. Elon Musk riding on the tail end of Ariel. Yeah. Exactly. Here, let me turn this up a little so we can hear Larry. This is Flag in Florida. Now here we start the with highest uh, level Scientology services. Here we start with Miscavige's real estate this list. Now today, the film kept being updated this with more and more pictures, uh, hey, clips of course, until there was over six dwarves, and it just yeah. went on forever. This is the founding church in Washington, D.C. Really crappy shots compared to what this came is later. This International Ecclesiastic Management Center. Hollywood this is Art, the upper level and combined protests. organizations in yeah. Los Angeles. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is there now. Celebrity Center International in yeah. Hollywood. This is the Scientology College in England. And this is the free wind. The free wind. I love the way he says that. Religious yeah. retreat. In fact, there are thousands of dynamics <laughs> and Scientology <laughs> organizations, missions, and groups. Look at that. It's insane. Every continent and over 100 countries of Earth. And millions of Scientologists to be your friends. Okay, so uh, you. Uh, that's for, I just have to stop it. That's from the IRS event, okay? Oh yeah, the war Real is over. Yeah. And others. Scientology was designed for you and all that you hold dear. Religion is as old as man. Man has believed far longer that he was a spirit than a piece of mud. In this age of materialism, he is being put into total effect. But in his common sense book, The Way to Happiness, L. Ron Hubbard, which, by the way, Way to Happiness it says it's a non-religious book. So why is he using it to all of a sudden bolster the idea of religion? It's mm -hmm. really, really weird. Pointed out that materialism is not necessarily true and that evolution could be just a way that other factors Where's build the a species of body. Yeah. Materialistic science has not disproven God or the spirit. 
They just say there isn't one. The lives and works of materialists certainly prove that they are not godly men. Most religions have meant peace for man, and there have been a very great many religions in man's history. Basically, in all religions, man has sought spiritual release. That is what we deal with in Scientology. Since Scientology is relatively new, you may hear the question asked, is Scientology a bona fide religion? Let me assure you, it is, according to more than 65 court decisions around the world. The conclusion that it, the Church of Scientology, is a religious institution. Okay, I think that's a good place to stop. Jeffrey, oh, we lost Jeffrey. He'll be back in a second. He, uh... Anyway, wow, what an incredible job you did with those lines. I mean, that was so difficult. I remember what it was like to go through and get all that and get every every word perfect. But we didn't shoot like the VO stuff. We did, I don't think we shot that on camera as well, did we? Uh, no. Well, yeah, some stuff we did. But you, mean, you mean like this here where I'm doing Yeah, this? we would just keep oh, shooting. Not, not, not. I think we just did it uh, without the camera and just two for the mic. Can you, are, can right. you pop me back on? Yeah, there we go. Um, I was going to say for some, some of the people who, um, shoot, I lost my thought about. Oh yeah, the reason that all looks funny with the cameras, you, you this none of the films in, in Scientology could ever leave an organization. There's no, no way no. access to them. But some yeah, these don't like crashed the orientation or the uh, film room one day and brought his <clears throat> probably at that time his flip phone with him. And yeah, him. yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's why you see it kind of moving around a little bit. But it's really the only thing. One guy got this thing out and put it, uploaded it. And of course, it kept getting copied by other people because I'm sure the church. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah, you know they they have they changed the whole system. It's no longer at Gold. It's it's called the Systems Department is now at, I believe it's at the Dissemination Center in East Los Angeles, and that's where they deploy all of these files and all of the the video systems. And basically, they send these gold reps to the organizations with a hard drive, an encrypted hard drive, and then they go to the organization and they load it on the hard drive at the organization. Nobody in the organization on the local church level, what I call retail Scientology, has access to these hard drives. They're like Mission Impossible. Like if you opened one up, it would probably b burst into flames, right? But, you know, at some point, somebody hopefully is going to leave. I mean, I had all that stuff. I just, at gold, I had... I had a bunch of these films on a, on a on a USB stick, but you know I just I was gone and then went oh shit I should have taken that with me. Uh, the films that I hope leak more than anything is uh, the confidential films, the OT films, because nobody. Oh oh hold on, hold on, we got to see this real quick. Hold on, this is great. This is precious. Hold on, hold on. He's God. Yeah, he's God. Check this out. Yeah, look at that of information and will answer many of your questions. It also contains copies of paintings which sketch the life of L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Dianetics and Scientology. Like Siddhartha Gautama, the Buddha, L. Ron Hubbard has always stated that he is just a man. I'm sorry, I had to put that up there. Oh yeah, oh and then there's this <laughs> line about art is it may be the these are the millions of friends. This is, again, it's repeated. Millions of people to be your friends. And then I guess this is where the, uh, this would be where the, oh yeah. This that's is the, the museum. museum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the museum, the L. Ron Hubbard uh, Life Exhibition. Oh, yeah. And, and then, there's Norman. Yeah, there's Norman. Oh, we can hear her. What's his name? Uh, what's the drunk comedian's name? I keep forgetting. We're here in the L. Ron Hubbard Life Exhibition. Yeah, here we can hear some of them. And with me is Mr. Norman Starkey, the trustee of Ron's estate. Mr. Starkey, just looking around, it's obvious that Ron was a man of many accomplishments. As a matter of fact, he was fully professional in 29 different fields. There's Such the line. There aviation, pick up another field. technology, filmmaking, <laughs> photography, music, and engineering. He was also a master mariner, licensed to captain any ship on any ocean, and a world-class explorer. But first and foremost, of course, he was a writer. These magazines, I take it, contain some of his early stories. All of those that you see here, all through the 30s and 40s, these were the form of entertainment. 
and with several million readers monthly, L. Ron Hubbard was virtually a household name. I see that he wrote in many different genres. Adventure, mystery, western, detective, spy, science fiction, fantasy, and even romance. <laughs> Incidentally, Ron also wrote under more than 20 pen names, so any single issue could carry three or four of his stories. He also wrote for Hollywood, didn't he? Oh, yes. <laughs> Here's an example. I'm sorry. Back in 1938, he wrote this 15-part series for Columbia Pictures. It was actually their most successful at the time. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. No, that's just a bunch of BS because he wrote one really stupid book called Treasure of the Sierra, Treasure of the, 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 the uh, Secret of Treasure Island. Hollywood bought that. And they they serialize it into a bunch of episodes, so there's no metric by which you can say a serial was was successful because nobody went to the movies to see the serial; they went to see the A film. You know, back then you had a you had a feature yeah. film, which is why we use the word feature. Then you had a, a B movie, which is why we use the word B movie because that was B up up there. And then you had a a a, uh, a serial, and you had a cartoon. And when people went to the movies. They went there for the afternoon. They went there at one and they stayed until the sun went down because it was hot and only the theaters had, had air conditioning. I mean, that's the history of the movie business. Yeah, right. So they had these really tacky fillers that were like Mexican wrestling, you know, like, like, like Buck Rogers is the only one I think anybody ever heard of. So Hubbard contributed to one of these things. And then all of a sudden it's the most successful serial in history. There's no way to measure that because everybody's buying their ticket to see gone with the wind. They're sure. not buying their ticket to see treasure of the secret. But it's just, it's so much hyperbole. It really just irked me. So I knew that when I, whatever, yeah. don't get me started. So, uh, Hey, hey Mitch, advance the progress bar just a couple of ways, you know, just to get yeah. Yeah, it's kind of hard. It's real touchy. Oh, but let, yeah. Me, yeah. let me just, so here we go through the whole thing. And we now, want to be talking to camera, but here's, you know, these are actually dialogue. Here's Kelly. Yeah. Hi, yeah. Can I help you? Ah, the public executive secretary. Yes, these good people want to know about Ron's books. Ah, uh, source material. So the public executive secretary would be the person like, uh, the test center in Hollywood that's under siege by the TikTokers, the person over that whole area would be her job. They're very popular. Yes, I told them that. They're here to find answers. Well, that's what Ron's materials contain, the answers. Man's been looking for them for an eternity, and there they are. Ah, riches. That's a lot of titles. Ron wrote about 275 books and pamphlets on Dianetics and Scientology, all of them bestsellers. Over 65 million copies sold in all. Could you tell us where Dianetics fits in? Dianetics burst upon the world and reformed the field of mental science. Book one summarizes Ron's right. researches prior to and even now, decades later, it tops the list. This is I the first mine. time in publishing history that a book has continued for years to be a bestseller. Is Dianetics outmoded then? Oh no. Ron modernized it in 1968. And in the late 70s, developed okay, so you got to hand me, you got to hand it to me for the blocking. The yeah, blocking what is, is the difference then between dynamics and It is and amazing. Ron clarified that. Yeah, no, it's further actually. redefined as what the soul. Mitch, how many cameras do you have going to shoot the scene? It's just one. It's, it's, uh, the study and yeah, we, 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 I didn't do multi camera shoots on film. Unless you have a lot of money, you shoot with one camera. Yeah. Uh, but plus, this is 35 millimeter film. No, I'm it's sure very our expensive. Like to know what beginning books you'd care to recommend. There are several of great interest that you should have. Look at that. Look at this. These camera moves are like exquisite. Is the I'm like of looking science. at this going, whoa. whoa. It's good this work. Is, yeah, I'm really like. Another is a new slant on life. Yeah. She's loading me and up. With yeah, she probably had to spend two hours in makeup to get her fingernails done right. Yeah. Then the fundamentals of thought. Dude, you're walking out of there with like two baggies yeah. full of books. Also, Scientology <laughs> Zero to Eight. This is crazy. This is crazy. Oh, I guess like you're loading me. And you know, you got you people watching this don't appreciate how hard it is for an actor to keep pulling a book in and hitting the same spot every time. That is like. I'm getting my books. So I recommend that you Look at him. He's got like. Yeah. Thank, thank God we hired a guy that could 
reach with the drama of basketball. They'll want to own them sooner or later anyway. <laughs> yeah. You can also get books. Ron's books through any major bookstore. So I just have to stop and make one comment. So Leary, as a noted professional magician, yeah. how much did that help you in the handwork that you had to do on these kind of oh, yeah. films? <laughs> Well, carrying books is not exactly sleight of hand, but no. Know. But my point is, you become very adroit and very skilled because you used to entertain us a lot with yeah. some of your magic tricks, and so yeah. you're really good with your hands. And I'm noticing this, thinking, yeah, it would pretty much take somebody with that kind of skill to handle those books. Usually, they well, only have this current. Jeffrey, you're, you're quite quick, Jeffrey, you're while you're holding those. Books. Yeah, this is why. Like, how do you even do that while you act? Know if you have and like, well, I'm. They sell out pretty fast. Forget it. I can't even do this. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. you, you make a I'm good really... point. I... Oh, okay, hold on. Now, here's the introduction okay. of the org board. Scientology organization. Each is totally and legally independent from the others, even within its own type of activity. Yeah, so, so, ha ha, if you sue one of us, you haven't sued all of us. That's no. basically what he's saying here. There are Dianetic and Scientology groups and Scientology missions. And churches, and prisons. which can train authors up to class <laughs> yeah. five. There are also higher level organizations, and flag land base, and flagship, the highest organizations in the world. All of these organizations are independent of one another, connected only by ecclesiastical bonds. But you can go to higher level organizations as you progress to higher levels of Look training or Mitch. case. Yes, uh, sir. Yeah, uh, I'm, I have to say, Larry, you have flawless Vanna White like handwork. Yeah, yeah. so that's yeah. now, there's the magic stuff because when you're I mean, on stage, that's, magic, that's, there's that's, a lot of watch, yeah. you know, I mean, it's perfect, stuff. perfect you know, hand movement. Yeah, yeah, and it has to line up with something, and it doesn't always line up with the thing. No, these, these shots works. are very good, they're very yeah. seamless. <laughs> Heavenly music. Now I'm going to give you some tips on how to get around in an organization normally referred to as the org. It's usually a friendly place. Here you usually. can often find Now, it. what did he mean by usually a friendly <laughs> place? Like, Except for those rare times when it's not Yeah, so when funny. people are screaming at one another and locking Except each other in Except for the sex checks, the yeah. sex checks and the beatings. They're right. usually friendly. Friends to share your interests in life. Yeah, this is the fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In a big org, there is usually a Department 21 called the Office of L. Ron Hubbard. Oh, by the way, uh, David Miscavige refers to himself and has himself referred to as Department 21. Uh -huh. Today, if you say in Scientology, especially like if you're up at Ant or a higher level org, and you say, oh, well, I got some you know, traffic from Department 21, that means from Miscavige. So he has replaced that office. Source, yeah, that's... Here's oh, and here's Lee Purcell. I see that you have a very nice office here for Ron. <laughs> I love that. Yes, indeed. Tell me, why is that? Well, when he was executive director, he traveled a lot. So he had an office in each org. Now all churches of Scientology have an office for Ron. Mm. It is a symbol that we are on source. That is true to his writings and ideals. So, how does your post fit in? As the LRH communicator, it is my job to ensure that this organization stays on source. So, L. Ron Hubbard had communicators? Oh yes, all over the world. Our post titles originated before Ron resigned as executive director in 1966, and we're proud to carry them forward as a tradition. I see. And after he resigned? Ron continued his research and writing. Yeah, right Others formed these organizations. Thanks. Executives and staff run them. We bought him time so he could research and write. Mitch, could and you that's pause? That's how we could get these done. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry. Uh, I was reading a comment. Yeah. I, I think Liz Gales. Uh, thank you, Liz. Uh, I think her comment is so important. Uh, uh, mandatory can, uh, mandatory viewing of this video turned a lot of new people off right away. Right. And uh, I, I think that's an important point because. This is one of those make break things. And, and, and I've <clears throat> said before in my writings that there's a culling mechanism in Scientology. They want to call out people. So illegal pre-clears, if you've had security clearances, journalist, if you're a police officer, you cannot go in. And I think this is a culling mechanism 
because some people will leave immediately like this right. is just too freaky for me yeah. and they'll leave. And so I, I'm glad that, that Liz Gale weighed in because I think that is important as part of the calling mechanism. Now, when you get the contract, they start locking you in. And, and I think it's purposely designed to exit people who would be potential trouble sources, mm -hmm. open-minded, all those other things. So I appreciate the comment, Liz. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, this was, if I can add to that, this was an openly discussed thing. That really? The people, oh, yeah. The, they, it was mentioned, talked about. I mean, the people that don't that were going to walk out, we don't want them. Yep. So Liz, Liz is uh, so yeah, right it, about it, that. It's not even funny. L. Ron Hubbard wrote, if people are going to leave, let them leave right away. Otherwise, right. consider that they're enrolled right. for the duration of the universe along with the rest of us. <laughs> when right. Miss Patty Cake comes in, let you know, we're going to turn turn that into a hard fixed glare right so yeah this is part of the calling yeah well, i was keeping scientology working you were just ksw bro KSW, yeah right yeah right um <clears throat> yeah okay. this this uh, just as a little bit of inside dope uh, a little trivia aaron smith levin's wife was a, she, that's what she did she was at lrh comp when when they oh. were in the sea oh. Oh, yeah i think she was lrh comp for all of pack the word founder means originator or author. I see. If I'm wrong, you know, shoot me an email. Now? I'll correct that. Ron gave yeah, the copyrights of all Bobby his Ryan. writings to a special Church of Scientology. Yeah, hold on. I have to put this one up from Gail. She also said, uh, yeah, that she at the time I can't see it. But hey, Jeffrey, read this because my my uh, video controls are covering up the. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It says uh, yes. Hold on. Yes, I was uh, PES. That's. Uh, the public exec, exec uh, that's what the, the bookstore officer was. Yeah. So Liz Gill writes, yes, I was personal. Uh, what is it again? Yeah, it says, okay, I can see it here. It says, yes, no, I was PES at the time, and I knew it was a culling method. But dang, but dang it really wow. worked. Yeah. Wow, that is a yeah, great we, observation. We snagged, all, we snagged a lot of people. It called everybody right Liz, away. could you put in? Uh, Liz, the materials of Dynex. Go ahead. Oh, just question to Liz. Uh, Liz, could you put in what percent of people left? I would like. Yeah, to in your observation, what did you yeah, see? Yeah, that's uh, really interesting. Really glad to have you, Liz. Here, Liz. Thanks for dropping by. I'm going to continue. Scientology on. would never be exploited by any one individual, but are available. Whoa! For hold on. Did you hear that? Would never be exploited by any one individual, and yet all of Scientology has been taken over by one individual. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Never altered. He established the Religious Technology Center and gave to it the trade and service marks of Dianetics and Scientology. This means that... Now, that's not actually true. He gave those to the, the, the uh, Church of uh, Spiritual Technology, RTC, administers them. They have control of them. Another organization owns them. It's a very slippery. He, 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 like you. That, sorry? Oh, I was going to say, L. Ron Hubbard sold his trademarks for $85 million dollars in a uh, dodgy deal where he said I had to be repaid for my research services. Right. And uh, that's covered. Uh, that's covered on my blog, how they actually pulled that off. But Ron didn't donate it. He t took in $85 million. Yeah. Right. And he, he did swear that he owned it. Yeah. The late uh, Denise Brennan uh, covered that in an, an affidavit. So anyway. Yeah. He swore, he swore that he gave it away. He donated Received it to the, the dynamics in Scientology Ron intended. Ron is very much with us in spirit. Man has never had a better friend. There you go. These That's the one. These books contain the written record of Ron's researches. They mean everything to man's future. So we are the keepers and appliers of the revelations. The revelations. We make certain the work is used Whoa. and is used right. I forgot this about that. Is our contribution. Now you get that this org is our contribution. Now this is before the ideal org or org uh, is before the org, ideal org program, but this was like a beginning of this kind of rollout of this idea that uh, that Scientologists themselves should be the one, even though she's on staff, uh, should be the ones that um, or the that that contribute and 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 establish the orgs. Now, this is not a C org. The, the organization we're seeing here is not C org. It's intended to be showing what's called a class five org, which would be manned, generally speaking, by public Scientologists, with a few exceptions. Well, really, with just one exception, which is LA org. Uh, but Jeffrey, that's something you could probably speak about because he's he's Miscavige set that up so he could pilot the uh, 
the Chase Wave scandal. Oh yeah, to put credit card fraud. Well, we're getting yeah. off topic, but I'm just saying. Yeah, that. but here, well, yeah, yeah, we'll just keep going. I'm just going to scan through this and see Let's if there's through, any. Yeah. Any other? So now he's going to well, go. Okay, this is the Bobby Lyons. Well, I, I, I want to see Bobby yeah, yeah, Lyons. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Yeah, because we had some this is very heavy hitter actors in this film. Bobby Lyons, I think, won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor in wow. Getting Straight and Getting Straight with Elliot Gould and Candace Bergen. He was yeah, he was yeah. So he's a, in that movie, and uh, as a young I mean, he was probably. Yeah, I don't know what, you know, I think what happened to him was Scientology. I mean, he was like heir apparent. There was a couple of guys who were heir apparent to James Dean, and he was yeah. one of them. The other one was Michael was Michael Parks. I mean, after James Dean died, you had these two young actors that are about the same age, Michael Parks and Bobby Lyons, and they were both kind of filling that slot for casting directors and filmmakers that had been vacated by James Dean. And so anyway, Bobby was, uh, yeah, he taught a class. I mean, other, uh, you know, he was... He was the other guy. Yeah, he he taught a lot of really good actors. Uh, so he has, he has an Oscar. Thank you. It's about case gain. That's what. Now these graphs are done before and after a person. Here's a little explanation of the OCA. Or what we call an intensive. These are personality traits. These were what they were before the person received auditing. And these show how they were improved. Also, the person's IQ or intelligence increased, and he became 14 points brighter. Now, here's another person. This shows progressive gain at the end of each of three intensives. And this shows how intelligence improved. Yeah, so smart. Here's one with four intensives. And we see how each series of 12 and a half hours improved him. With that increase in IQ, he must be finding it much easier to solve his problems. And this personality improvement must be making it far easier to get along in life. <laughs> that is very impressive. 19th century <laughs> psychology didn't even think that was possible. Ron was invited to the White House one time to show what Scientology could do. And the two psychologists there nearly found... Well, did, did everybody pick up on that, that he yeah, was invited I, to the White House? I was invited to the White House to show how science. <laughs> you know, what was funny, just by way of interjection, is that uh, Ron, L. Ron Hubbard wrote a letter to uh, President Kennedy at the time saying that he could use Scientology to train the the uh, uh, pilots, fighter pilots, right. And astronauts. Right. And uh, it wasn't answered. He, Mr. Hubbard, nuclear physicist, was insulted that JFK did not reply and take him up on his offer. And L. Right. Ron Hubbard even offered a discount to President Kennedy on Scientology training of our military. Wow. wow. Imagine, imagine he, he the rudeness. Was, well, he, he was man's best friend. I mean. I know. So anyway, uh, Larry, during th this scene, this this uh, Robert Lyons won an Oscar. So you're working with a great actor. I think he was either nominated or he won. But, well, but, but, but I'm just saying you're working with a great actor. And this is a scene because it's he's the heavyweight. Hmm. He's coming on as the heavyweight. Mitch, what was the intonation here, the authoritarian, or what was the sense of the scene well, here? Well, the sense of the scene is that the ethics department, that's the gatekeeper. Like, mm. nothing's going to get past them. Like, the, the psych victims that have been implanted by psychiatrists to get into and infiltrate Scientology and destroy them, they're not going to get past the, the, the ethics oh, officer. That's so like this guy's the hard ass. Like, yeah, he's the guy. He's, he's the best. No man the shall door. pass. Yeah. yeah, and and plus they have this incredible insightful technology that they can use to detect and handle bad people. Well, they wouldn't uh, have got to the White House if they didn't have it. Come on. Exactly. I mean, the, I'm sure that there were intelligence forces and military forces that were begging the president. Uh, you know, and 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 you know, uh, Kennedy was just coming off the Bay of Pigs, which was a real problem. Yeah. Maybe he was looking to like bolster, you know, get some cred. Well, the Soviets tried to steal it from Ron, he said. They so, did. Yeah. They broke into his hotel room and they stole it. Uh, they actually did steal it. You know, and they wanted to use Dianetics. They wanted to turn it into what he called black Dianetics and use it to brainwash people. Oh, oh, oh my God. So, back to the yeah, let's go. Right. Yeah. They said it would revolutionize the whole field of malpractice. In other you. words, do them out of their cushy government jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Does that mean that there. Scientology... What's that? He's he's doing the heavy lifting with with the message, but he yeah about, see he's so light and easy in conversation yeah yeah oh, and that's that's where you can take you know you're putting out the hearts and that, and it was brilliant casting I mean because Bobby was the perfect guy because he could yeah 
they have to smile and uh, and and be friendly and warm. And uh, he's probably more conversational than any of us because you know we we all had to have that sort of sort of stiff pr uh, presentational thing. Yeah, Bobby, exactly. But he, he Bobby, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, he's a good actor. Gene psychology or symbol? Oh no. But it shows you what happens when you address the spirit, not the brain. Even the theory of evolution has never proven that something else is making it all happen. Psychology and psychiatry are proven failures. Stone Age. You <laughs> seem to have it in for psychology and psychiatry. On this post of director of processing, I sometimes see the damage that they do. Worse than that, they lie and seek to block the way for real advances. With government support, they are injuring man's future. It makes it harder to pull man out when such criminals have government billions to push him deeper into the mud. And with their emphasis on drugging and punishing people just makes our job tougher, that's all. And don't they attack the church? When you think of what Dianetics and Scientology can do, really help children and people learn, handle drugs, handle crime, save happiness and lives, and all the other things that I see it doing every day, only a raving lunatic would try to harm Dianetics and Scientology, or Scientologists for that matter. <laughs> that is what they think of us, 100%. Raving, raving lunatics, yeah. 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 They need psychiatric help. <laughs> that would finish them. <laughs> that's, that's the big joke. Now they that need. that's out of the way, could you tell us about auditing? Well, the best way is to experience auditing for oneself. Auditing is for you, and the gains are yours alone. But there is a fair description of it in what is Scientology. That was, by the way, one of the three, uh, one of the three black staff members at Gold. Uh, but these pages will give you some idea of a few of the ordinary uses of Scientology. Ordinary uses. As opposed to extraordinary. Yeah. It's so here we are back at the org board, and now we're going to uh, go to the, oh, here is the course room. Outside school uh, prerequisites. Do Jim these Eskimo. students intend to take up pastoral counseling as a profession? Some do, but others are getting trained to take advantage of student co-auditing. I'm trying to see if I read It's far it. more economical. It's called the training room. Mm -hmm. However, most people who take professional training do so in order to handle themselves and others around them better in life. Now, doesn't that look like fun, just spending eight hours a day in a course room like that? No, sir. That gentleman is getting trained so he can handle his associates and friends. And that housewife intends to audit her whole family when she gets her certificate. People yeah, today, today she's being warehoused at the main <laughs> building in, in L.A. In, in, and this fellow's being trained to cover up crimes and felonies of Scientology. Yeah, yeah. For many reasons. yeah this guy, the, the supervisor, is trained to sit in on fake arbitrations. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Many take it on as their career, but no matter its use, Scientology training enables them to do better in any chosen activity. Uh -huh. By the way, have you told them about the films? No. Oh, here oh, we go. Great. Big Ron wrote check the this out. He even directed several of them. Only Academy students get to see them. They make training much faster. Hey, you put away that camera. Ron <laughs> was always he was always plugging himself as a filmmaker. Uh, hey, did you tell him about the films? <laughs> Literally, he thought people would sign up for courses just so they could see the films. Okay, back <laughs> at the art board, and now we're is... going to the, uh, this is where are we going to now? We're going to the ethics section. Oh, oh yeah, this was oh. Rick Ross. Okay, so. I, I forgot. Yeah, Rick so, was... yeah, Bobby was playing the director of processing. Right. That's why he was explaining the OCA graph. Now, Rick, who's another heavy, he he played a lot of heavies on TV. He, now he's going to go, this is really funny. It has been confirmed by the courts that civil authority cannot interfere in church disputes. See that? You hear that? This is yeah. about the whole arbitration thing. This is it. This yeah. is where this is where you get the big briefing that you have now given up your, what do you call it, Jeffrey? Your, uh, all, all your civil, civil. Yeah, yeah, you've given your, over your consent to be yeah, governed by the ecclesiastical laws this, and rules of Scientology. This is the guy. Yeah. They're going to bring this film into court and they're going to play these it. contracts. Yeah, That's hard. Gonna, You're signing 10 copies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they would literally, the idea was they take the film into court, 
they take the affidavit in the court and the, you'd be shut down because you yeah. had given up your consent. So yeah. you'll be happy to know that if you have a problem in Scientology, yeah, there's a Scientology justice system available to you where you can resolve it. In part. And most important, there are church services each Oh Sunday. man, I thought he was going to talk. He, I was confused with another film, with the, uh, the testing film where the ethics officer does a whole big long speech. I, I, I was... I got them confused. Mother, take your child, now recognize and volunteer. And let us all go each our separate way, remembering that when we see Celeste again... But how, it's a religion. This day. I saw, I, you saw this film. It's a religion. People are getting married here. How can yeah. this be anything well, other the, than a religion? Well, that's a baby in the naming ceremony. Yeah, they're doing this. Welcome to your new body. Yeah. yeah. Let them listen. Listening. Yes, indeed. I married them, you know. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that was a Tell song. me, does anyone have to change their faith to obtain services here? Oh, no. All denominations are welcome here. The common denominator <laughs> like... of all religions is the human spirit. And Scientology oh can attain the long sought religious goal of knowing one's potential. Mm. In addition to what we've mentioned, is there any other pastor service these good people should know about? Yeah, except, uh, as Ms. Cabbage told me personally, yeah, this is true. We welcome them all, but we expect them to become Scientologists right. and drop that other nonsense. Oh, that's in their IRS tax uh, agreement. Right, yeah. right. What's that? Get rid of that pimp costume we always see you wearing. Yeah, what, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look at this. What is this with the dog collar and the pins? And, no, this, no, I tell you, this, this was the other costume. Yeah. He's a minister. I yeah, get it. Doing this costume was insane coming up with this. Well, because yeah. it looks like a it doesn't it, your regular dog collar is kind of yeah. a black shirt with a white dog collar. Right. Right. And so we had to come up with something that looked like a dog collar, but was, you know, a minister's collar, which is referred to as right. a dog collar, huh. but kind of had a, 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 was refreshed and updated. Yeah. We went through a lot of stuff. And Hubbard had described him wearing a cross. And so the, what his description was, it was like a wrapper cross, like a big bling chain thing. It looked stupid. So you can, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you can see on the collar, we put these little these little Scientology cross pins just to have yeah, it more. And he has the, tri the, tri the double S down there. Right yeah, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sewn. That very, that's all, uh, that's all, yeah. that's sewn. Exactly. It's actually hidden, mi hidden microphone. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> And a high depth camera. Can handle it, one is always free to bring it to the chaplain. Sometimes, when someone can't afford. Yeah, tell that to the John, the Jane Doe's at uh, the Danny yeah, Masks, okay. and they all went to the chaplain. Professional auditing. I can persuade some student auditor to take him on. I also handle human emergencies, and in such matters, I can be greatly helped by people who become volunteer ministers. But whatever you do. Remember that you're always welcome in Scientology. Now, you may have some questions concerning the validity and integrity of the organization. Well, no less... Okay, so in the original treatment, this particular section, uh, Hubbard had advised to go out and get some legal scholars and have them interviewed to bring validity, to give validity to Scientology. But, and then the film was made after the IRS win. So then Miscavige said, no, 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 just show that the IRS says we're a, a religion. We don't need to talk to religious scholars. So I did this rather complicated sequence. And their findings? Look at that. Yeah, bankers' boxes prove yeah. it. Scientology yeah, no. is a bona fide religion. I had to fill the, the VO with something, Jeffrey. And so I got it. Social yeah. betterment organizations operate exclusively for religious, yeah, charitable, so, uh, and educational purposes. That they benefit the public rather than the interests of private individuals. And that no part of their income goes to the benefit of any individual or non-charitable entity. It is likely that Scientology was scrutinized more deeply than any other church in history. And it passed that review with flying colors gaining full religious and charitable recognition. Awesome. In doing so, the IRS granted the church. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Okay, let's just, oh yeah. Now these, I we can run through these real quick. This is really funny. Uh, this was dropped in the subsequent version of the film that they got rid mm. of testimonials because it looks like if you do a testimonial, then it means you don't believe the film. my life. 
I don't know. I don't think Leah Remini was in her. I remember I shot. Which is priceless to me. I remember I shot a bunch of these. <laughs> the hell is that? The country western artist. Yeah, 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 okay. They would not use people's names. Oh, the Ann Arthur. Yeah, oh, yeah. Is that Megan Shields? Yeah, that's Megan Shields. She, uh, yeah, she passed away from cancer. Yeah, she almost killed a lot of people. She almost killed me, uh, just because yeah. they they would uh, they would call up. She was willing to prescribe drugs and so forth on the phone without seeing a patient, and yeah. sometimes that has some really bad results. Yeah that, yeah, that could be bad. I understand my patients, and they get better much faster. Scientology has helped me gain my own control and my own certainty over life. Jazz musician. Because of Scientology, I've been you know able who? to turn a dangerous job into a long and successful career. Thanks. Okay, so I started that shot at about noon, and you can see the sun's going down because that guy <laughs> couldn't say that live. Oh, my God. Scientology, I take tremendous joy in what I do. With Scientology, I am achieving my goals and making my dreams come true. Since applying Scientology... I can this was, this guy was a staff job. member. I don't so know where the hell he totally him. totally opened up my ability to create. Oh, Actually, from my first day in Scientology, Julia I McGinnis? stopped fighting life. Yeah, that's Julia McGinnis. With, hmm. with Scientology, I'm able to push through any barriers I come across on my job or in life. Once I discovered this is, Scientology, this is disgusting. I, I got to tell you, this is very real inner peace and joy. This is so tacky. This is the only really bad part. I mean, I don't know. As a kid, I always wanted to be a stunt performer. And Scientology has helped me to make that dream become a reality. Thanks to Scientology, I'm building drug-free bodies. Scientology gave me the hey. tools I needed to create my own success and happiness. Megan's Using part. Scientology, I was able to take a small idea and build it into a national success. Since I've been in Scientology, uh, I am happy. Isaac Hayes. <laughs> yeah, great yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah. Chef yeah. underneath like you had on the other guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Entertainer. They, yeah, they should have said chef. <laughs> yeah. Or just put like chocolate chocolate balls. <laughs> Since Scientology, I can get my own message across when communicating to others. With Scientology, not only am I better able to help my patients through uncomfortable experiences, I have the ability to help people in all aspects of life. Scientology has helped me to conquer all the barriers that have gotten in my way. Now, Is that Miriam's mother? No, that serious. was uh, Pom Olson, the artist. She's okay. married to Randy Hepner, who's Tom okay. Cruise's uh, this is, pilot. This okay. is, uh, yeah, that's Izzy Chade. He passed oh, away yeah. a few years ago. Yeah. Scientology has made life fun. There. With Scientology, you think clearer There's and react faster. Keith Keith Coat, Coat, and very famous train motorcycle the trainer. To tell you the honest to God truth, without Scientology, I would be dead. So, I mean, That's personally, I mean, you curse the alley didn't die. With the communication well, skills I've gained in Scientology, I know I can reach any goal I set out to achieve. It's kind of Becoming chilling. Becoming a Scientologist is yeah. the best thing I've ever done. Scientology has increased my ability yeah. to help students understand what This guy was the head headmaster of uh, Delphi. I'm sure there's a lot of people in this audience that recognize it. Better. Yeah. It's made all the difference in the world. Scientology makes work fun. Scientology like staff member. Oh, there's really David right. O'Donnell. Thanks to Scientology, I make the right decisions in business and in my personal life. I don't know who this guy is. Oh, there's Steve. We got to talk about him someday. That's Steve Hayes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was the attorney behind the Citizens for an Alternate Tax System. Yeah, he's there's somebody. Due to Scientology, I'm in control. That's uh, uh, Jim Eskimen's wife. wife. Oh, yeah. Life. And what happens to me? I owe my career to Scientology. Oh, this is uh, oh, hold that's on. Bob Adams. Yeah, that's Bob, Bob Adams. Adams, former he's like NFL. The, the, I think he. Uh, yeah, he's. Uh, he was probably he was probably uh, the the most <laughs> famous NFL footballer who was never entered into the Hall of Fame. But no, he yeah. does PR for OSA. He's been an OSA staff yeah. member forever. Yeah, I saw his him, wife. Uh, his wife times. is a sex checker. She she did my last sex check before I got wow. the hell out of there. Scientology. This is some very, very powerful. Oh Freddie, my God! Alfredi Johnson. Alfredi. Yeah. Alfredi. Why am I not in jail yet, Johnson? Yeah. Yeah. Situation. Fighter. It saves lives. What the hell that is. Well, basically, there's no part of my life that Scientology it's John. hasn't helped. John Travolta, actor. Yeah. Yeah. Went out on you. Yeah. There are many more testimonials in this book. The percentage of success stories in Dianetics and Scientology oh, is over ninety-nine right percent. They originate in thousands across the world. Okay, what do we got here? This is just a, a fluffy piece. Oh, and then we have the 
we have, I think this is the ending. Yeah. So oh, yeah. This Larry, is Larry Walton. I hope to answer some of your questions. Larry, I'll give you some idea. Yeah. Now, check out the these. Doors. Yeah, these are the scary doors. Something happened. And notice we've got Dianetics on the left, Scientology on the right. That's like a law Such a thing in, in every Scientology. You have to. You, you, Dianetics always has to some be on the left. Rises, and man takes a new step toward a better life, a better culture. There is a difference with Dianetics and Scientology. It has never happened before in all the countless years of time. In this brief moment, we have our temporary chance for handling and continuing life. All these moves that I'm making that you're Clouds cracking back over this culture. And yeah, this is so choreographed. In this short All of the movements, in this when they're place, going in the doors, and we have our when, what, 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 what you're, you know, we what dialogue you're walking on. The decay, and then the camera has to the catch you perfectly. And notice that each plan. time you walk forward, the camera moves back, it. but it lets you get it is bigger. Our to free yeah. you. So as the thing goes, you get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then at the very end, you step in the camera and do the last line and then disappear. It was, we rehearsed this thing for, I can't even tell you how long. But you know, one of the one of the background people say, might come in and, and then help you a little to lead us slightly help you. Yeah, exactly. Yes, we could say that. Yeah. One of them was <laughs> Sterling Tompkins for you, Sterling you Tompkins, yeah. Chance. But that would be like offering someone a diamond and saying it was glass. Right this instant, you are at the threshold of your next trillion years. They're actually you walking will live in. in They're... Shivering, agonized darkness. <laughs> Or you will live it triumphantly in the light. The choice is yours, not ours. If you this minute say, I will, for better or for worse, go on in Scientology, you will open the door to your own future. If you say otherwise, you slam tomorrow shut in your own face. I'm sorry, but that's the way it really is. We are not making any claims for Dianetics and Scientology. It is you who, when you've experienced what can be, are the one that will make the claims. What is true is true for you. In man's past barbaric ologies and religions, they told you that you were better, that you had to believe them. You had to have faith there was a possible recovery for you, that there were various gods and that heaven waits and you were told by some that you were a one life animal and by others that hell yawned if you dared to sin you had to believe them or you got burned at the stake or shot or flunked you don't have to believe us or even trust us if you work with scientology you will find out for yourself What's true is what is true for you. You have a friend. He worked for half a century in a violent and often unkind world to open the gate for you. We are here to help you put yourself on the trail that leads up. If you fall off, we'll try to help put you back on. But it is up to you. It is how you use it that counts. For you are the one that counts. If you leave this room after seeing this film and walk out and never mention Scientology again, you are perfectly free to do so. It would be stupid, but you can do it. You can also dive off a bridge or blow your brains out. There it is. That is your choice. But if you don't walk out that way, if you continue with Scientology, we will be very happy with you, and you will be very happy with you. You will have proven that you are a friend of yours. We here in this org are really just doormen to the great highway found and built by Ron into a better future. I think my end of my file might have got, hold on one second. Let it just catch up. Door. We gotta see the doors. Yeah, no, we'll get there. I just wanted to let the streaming. I might need to catch oh, up. Buffering. I don't know what it's doing. But we'll get there. Here, oh, then he steps out, and then, oh, no. 
Oh, no. no. Whoever oh, recorded this, that's the end of the file. I never looked at the end of it. Oh, well, the doors open up and it's all glowing light and you push in. Like and, this. Uh, and go like this. And yeah. Like this. Yeah, I know. Cut, Damn. So will somebody please Amazing. leave and bring that film so we can actually see a high quality? So real quick, I want to, I want to, <laughs> yeah. Real quick, I want to just run through some of these uh, comments. Jeffrey, you may have starred some of them as well as my co-host. Okay, so when did Mitch lose the long hair? I started thinning out. Okay, hold on. This is from uh, Love Food Kitchen. I started thinning on top, and I'm like, I'm not going to be that dude with the comb over. I went to my hairdresser. I don't know. It was in the sometime in the after this film was made, and I just said, take it all off. I'm like, bad boys age badly. I'm going to be okay. And so I really had nothing on it. Okay, this says, uh, this is from uh, Susan Holmes. Larry is looking very camera ready back, back in the day. day. No, I th day. <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think Larry still looks camera ready. I think, yeah, I think you're still looking great. Okay, this yeah. is uh, 72. I don't think they meant that badly. I think it was actually a compliment. Oh. It was just. Oh, wow. Damn. Yeah, okay. So Stana Stana Rums with Donna says question if someone saw the film and didn't want to stay in, could they leave? Or were they already committed even before then? Jeffrey, what do you think? Well, from what I understand, I and I would defer like Liz Gale. Um, no, you're free to leave because Elroy yeah. Hubbard wanted wanted you exited right away. If they're going to leave, let them leave right away. And so uh you know, I I my, my feeling based on my experience is they would try to talk you into like, well, well, what was going on with you during the film? What did, what right. word didn't you understand? Right. Right. <laughs> why don't you take a course? Like, why don't you just take a $50 com course and try it? Right. So I, I think you could technically leave if you made it, but I think they would try to induce you or persuade you to at least take a course or a buy a book. Right. right. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. the uh, Hubbard's overarching thing was hard sell. Right. So if he had a body in the shop that you could recruit, I would, I, I think uh, that they would try to keep you in. Yeah. And look, if Larry star power isn't enough to keep you in, then you yeah. don't have a yeah. brain. Mitch is directorial genius. Yeah, exactly. And Ellen okay. Hubbard's we're moving right you. along now. That's yeah, not good. We're moving on. We're moving on. We're moving on. Okay. April in Amsterdam wants to know, I'm loving all the reminiscing, but you, could you please ex explain the jumping off a bridge and blowing your brains out? Oh, yeah. Jokes. Oh. Thank you. Okay. So, oh, Larry, you can in the, in the, What's that? Maybe she didn't hear it, but that's what I said. You could, you can. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. You also so, jump off a bridge or blow your brains out. Yeah. So April may have not known that yeah. yet. She, okay. she, yeah. So yeah. now I'm sure she probably knows that. Good point. Well, no, Mitch, I, I think to clarify, that was LRH wrote the film treatment and LRH wrote those words. Yeah. Those were joke. his words. So those yeah. were yeah. 100% his words. And they were acted like, an, to use a Scientology term, they acted like an implant. So the, the, the menace of the film was if you don't choose not to join it, that would be foolish. You could not join Scientology, but you could also jump off a bridge or blow your brains out. That's what terrified me when I first saw the film. Right, right. And so, so we'll make, make light of those lines now because they were so... Yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah. And yeah. Plus, they were taken out of the film because they had such a bad effect. Yeah. Uh, so Luke Manal says, I wonder who paid for all that film. Yeah, well, yeah. taxpayers paid for all that film. Um, <laughs> yeah, all of us paid with our donations. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Tom, Tom Cruise might have paid a lot of it because it was a film. So why not? And, you know, we were making the films at least look better. So as stupid as they were, at least when he showed them to his friends, there wasn't an embarrassment quality wise. That had a it lot was, to do. It with was it. A, a very serious film. I mean, that's a very yeah. illegal, and that's why yeah. I made the point when we began that this is a creative effort that turned into a, a legal contract. Right. The, exactly. And the, the exactly. whole premise of it, when you sign the attestation that you've seen the film, you agree that Scientology is a religion. That's their first step in dragging you behind First Amendment religious protections. Right. So, Absolutely. So there is a, a great creative effort to to entrap people legally by yeah. sign, having them sign a contract. Yeah, I mean, they're, yeah, they're dragging you. They're gaslighting you. But it's, yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, okay, so it. Leaving Scientology said, question, did you, re Larry, did you record the audio for Can We Ever Be Friends? Oh, I did. I did. Yeah, I, oh, you I directed did. you. On, I directed you on that. Yeah. Oh, boy. That, that was, was my bad. first audio book type book that I ever directed. 
Um, and I didn't learn very much because I'm struggling with mine. I'm still working on it. Yeah, I remember that. God, we sat up in that little studio for, oh, it was like, and it wasn't going anywhere. And then it was like, well, you go up and direct Larry. It's not like you needed to be directed, but it was like, it, that was such a complicated thing to do a hover. Well, and if you remember the script, every line in the script Hubbard wrote a tone level for. Oh, right. Oh, wow. So, right. Yeah, the tone, you have to be antagonistic or whatever. And not that antagonism would be one of the. But yeah, exactly. You could suddenly be switching tone levels from one line to another in a paragraph, and it became so ridiculous. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we had to figure out a, justifi inter a justifiable interpretation so we could get it approved. That was crazy. I forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, so here, this says, this is from Pegasus 223. Question, what if you had claimed that $120,000 as a loss of your income tax? The IRS would then see it as income to COS. I guess, yeah. I don't know. It's like, no, it, it, it's, a, it's a donation. You couldn't. Yeah, uh, so it's never yeah. going to be seen as income. Yeah, they call it a donation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is a little bit of you. Okay, hi, Catherine. I hope you're still here. This is from Catherine Olson. She's Catherine is great at just coming up with these little tidbits. Hey, regarding Mr. Lim, the guy in charge of uniforms at the ILO, that's the International Liaison Office, who was in charge of uniforms, got in trouble for hanging out with him and golfing during his post time. So that's, that's you know, you're with Mr. Lim, but the thing is, is that's a very common thing especially amongst asians that's this guy was probably golfing to give them a great deal because that's how you do it the golf the, the deals happen on the golf course and then the guy gets in trouble be, for, i mean i would say he was probably doing his job brilliantly yeah. by golfing with mr limb sure. yeah. anyway just these guys no. they don't they don't get it they don't understand the power of golf thanks for that uh we have a, a question mitch yeah uh, larry the audience just could you hear? Could you speak the lines again? No. I don't know no. that that's fair. Okay. But... <laughs> Wait, well, I, I I pulled out the script the other day. I haven't you know opened this in in yeah. thirty years. But there's there's a page of uh, one of the pages of my that wow. I had highlights. Yeah. No, so I actually yeah, I write your lines, then you go you know okay, and then I'd underline certain things like ah uh, here we go. But that would be like oh. But that would be like offering someone a diamond. That would be like offering hmm. someone a diamond and saying it was glass. So I don't know hmm. if there was another word in there that I just took out and probably Mitch went, yeah, it sounds better like that. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and a little note. Oh, metaphors, just in case I didn't know what it, <laughs> I wrote a little. Metaphors. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So Especially in the next trailer. Will live it in a shivering, agonized darkness, or you will live it triumphantly in the light. So, uh, yeah, I was mouthing some of it. Yeah, I'll bet. So, I hey, here's a comment from Dreamscape. Wow, Scientology sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. We had, I mean, actually, sometimes we did have fun. But I must say, when we did the film in Africa, that was like a six week oh. shoot. And we had bad weather and we had, but we had, what was the guy's name? Richard, oh, yeah. the guy oh. that played opposite you, the messenger. Yeah. And he was that so guy. He was, was a Scientologist. He was a clown. He was, so yeah, he did stand up comedy. Yeah. He was the weirdest guy. He was, his parents were like new age Christians. He grew up in a bus traveling around with his parents, giving sermons until they eventually got there. They bought a theater and they turned that into their church. And, you know, they would make money washing windows on the weekends. I never forgot this guy. He was such a funny guy. Yeah. And he, he said, yeah, I called my mom up and I said, hey, the Scientologist asked me to do this film. Should I do it? And she said, yeah, there's a lot of important people will probably see it. Yeah, go ahead. Do it. So it was like yeah. he, we had so much fun, the three of us, you know, while the kids yeah. at the ranch were actually at the ranch. The kids at the ranch are suffering. We don't know it. And we're just yeah. having a lot of fun making yeah. this film, even though it was yeah. a lot of hot. <laughs> it was a lot yeah. of long days, freezing at night, yeah. uh, just eating dust all day long. It was, you know, shitty food, but you know, it was also fun. Hey, okay, hey, thank you, April, for Amsterdam. Oh, thanks thank you, for April. the yeah, thank you very much. And so April says, Thanks for the live stream, guys. I finally got the joke at the end of the film. We are <laughs> here for that, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, gl- happy. Yeah, a lot of people still haven't gotten that joke, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, and that that uh, people turn. Okay, so uh, da, 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 da. so this is uh, so okay. This was the next one. That, we're almost done with the comments. Uh, this is Marla Dillard. Question. Thank you, Larry, Mitch, and Jeff. Do you have an update on your audio book for us? Well, I'm still in the blanket for it, which means I'm still working on it. I'm finally making some really good prog- forward progress. And I did a, I just recently did an interview with a noted uh, TV show from another investigative show from another country. On it. That's going to air at the end of the month. I'm hoping to get the audio book done in time for that because I'd like to see my next royalty check from Amazon be more than like a day at Starbucks. So no, mm-hmm. it, it was like, but yeah, that's the, the, that's the update is I'm working on it and it's actually going well. Uh, so let me go on here. And I think that brings us. Oh yeah. Just this one last one I want to do. This is, this is from Barb Trez and, uh, Question: Was it shown to people during their first fifty, or or were they already taken? No, this is one hundred percent. This is the gatekeeper. This is before you do anything. You come in, you do an OCA. They find your ruin. They say, okay, well, you need to see this film. You see the film, you sign the thing. They sell you that course. Yeah, yeah, that's that has to be emphasized, Mitch. The TikTokers at the test center on Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah, they'll get you in there. They'll take your Oxford Capacity Analysis test. I, I made a joke when I do my character Easter at Mills or the Oxford capacity analysis is to test your capacity right, for right, bullshit. Right. But um, you take the OCA and then you have to see the film. That's right. the price of admission into right, right. the church. If you don't, if you refuse to see the film, you will not, that ends your journey. That's it. Yeah, you're done. Yeah, you're done. Yeah. So that brings us to the end of this. And I think uh, this has been such a fantastic experience. Three and a half hours. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah, I didn't think we would go this long. Uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, and, and this is my feeling as well. Ed, Ed you said yeah. this is a blast. Absolutely. Uh, Are a lot of the people overseas watching this? Like, yeah, yeah. Well, I have. Yeah, absolutely. I have a bunch of people in Germany. Global. G- Germany is like my book. You know, not that it's the best selling book in the world, but it's uh it's definitely sold a lot of copies in germany i did some german television i'll send you some links larry the german tv stuff i did is really really funny oh, great. Uh, and uh so a- after that i you know and i got a lot of i got a, a, a few quite a few uh, messages from people saying hey look in all of the you know quote unquote german speaking countries or foreign speaking countries there's a lot of people that speak english we're really happy they're buying my book i mean I, it's the third biggest selling area is germany it goes like us wow. uk germany they hate wow. scientology that okay. test center thing where they go out and they hand out tickets and they bring people in you can't do that in germany it's illegal for the church to do that mm. because it's designated as a cult and they're not allowed mm-hmm. to proselytize on the streets germans are really appreciated and they asked so a lot of them asked me hey if you could stream you know like mid after you know like early afternoon t- between 12 and 2 that would be fantastic for them because that's evening for them and they like to watch this stuff so yeah, yeah. We definitely have fans in Germany, so sure. <laughs> I think there's some I think, Germans right now throwing back some beer and having having uh-huh. a great time. Yeah, I considered th- this interview, Larry. Thank you so much for coming on. To, for me to be able to interview the his, the people who were there is part of a historical project because uh, I've interviewed a lot of people who are not who are no longer with us, like Bill Franks, former EDA. right, right. Um, these right. are valuable historical contributions to the study of especially the architects of uh, yeah. Mitch, an architect of image. Uh, Larry, you carried the film. And it's, I, I think this is an important contribution to a study of what really goes on behind the scenes and how Scientology is made by the yeah. people who, who helped make it. So it's, I, I hope we, we can delve more into these projects. I really enjoyed having you on. Larry. Yeah, no, I think this Mitch, is, I think we, I th- thank you. A, thank you, Jeffrey. No. I think we have more to talk about. I think the three yeah, of us have more behind to talk the scenes. About. Yes. So I hope, it's hope. so fun to have the director and one of the actors. That's yeah, amazing. I know. Yeah, I, and, yeah. Give it some yeah, about your, yeah, and Jeffrey, who's like the film critic. Yeah, I mean, the film yeah. Uh, yeah, scholar, yeah, historian. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, were great, Jeff, Jeffrey gave us two thumbs up on our film. Yeah. And so we're like, oh, but yeah, you, you know, sometimes we may lose sight of that, Jeffrey, the fact that this really is important. These stories are going to live is. here on, on YouTube forever. Uh, so, um, with that, I think what we're going to do is we're going to uh, 
say hello to my dog on the way out yeah. because my dog is in the other room going absolutely nuts. Yeah. So listen, guys, this has been really fantastic. Thanks everybody who joined us. Thanks yeah. for especially yeah. anybody who hung out till the end. And uh, there's was a couple of little things. So I just have to do a little bit of housekeeping first. So um, you can support my journey to hold Scientology accountable. You can go to buy me, buy me coffee.com at Mitch Brisker. I'm sure Larry can verify the fact that I am not a salesman. I am just like, I really suck at that. Like I need 20 or so people to order around to do stuff. I'm really bad at doing it myself. Uh, there's more. Yeah, but wait, there's more. Scientology, the big line merch at mrbrister.com. It helps to support the channel. You can also get a, a signed autograph hard cup, uh, you know, hard book. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks for the plug. And uh, if you did subscribe to my channel, thank you very much. Also, make sure if you're not already watching this on Jeffrey's channel, I didn't, I forgot to, I got to get a link so I can bring your channel up. But uh, Jeffrey's at Scientology Money Project, at Scientology Money Project, right, Jeff? Yes. Yeah, yep. so please, because there is, and, and visit his blog. There is an incredible wealth of information on his blog, and it's really funny, and I don't yeah, take a date. Funny stuff on there. <laughs> yeah, and you can you can contribute directly to this channel, but you can pay, PayPal me at mitchbrisker at gmail.com. And what else? I think I've done it all, so... Now we're going to say hi to Weston, my lovely little puppy, and I'm going to go rescue him from the other room. Great mm -hmm. having you guys on. Uh, Thank you. All the, you guys uh, the, who watch this till the end, I really, really appreciate it. We'll Mitch, be back. Are yeah. You, are you going to hit Hollywood Boulevard tonight, Jeffrey? Are you going to? Is tonight a big oh, night? Oh, yeah, Friday. Friday night. Yeah, I'm going to go down there. I'm going to go down there and watch the live stream. I might even live stream myself. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, maybe. Well, I, mean, I have, I have, I kind of have mixed feelings. I'll tell you why. I, I, Jeffrey, you're going to talk me out of this. I went down there. I, I hung. I handed out those little tickets. I guess you saw that. Yeah. I handed out these these tickets. It said, you know, rated rated C for cult, and it was great because you know I helped set that place up. And I thought, you know, I'm going to go down. I, I, it would be good for me to go down there and say, you know, Mia culpa. I did all this stuff. It's bullshit. I realize that now. Uh, and I kind of felt a responsibility to do that, but I went down there and it's like, I'm so happy to have these kids doing this. You know, William's not a kid, oh, yeah. he's, but to have them doing it, and they they really don't need us to come down there and say, you know, I mean, I I wish I I Jeffrey, you and I have spoken about trying to get some of them, especially Chris without a Hellcat. He's yeah. so great on the megaphone. Oh, that megaphone! Yeah, yeah he's amazing yeah. on the megaphone, and I would love to get him to go down to SMP, and we could ask like, what yeah. happened to Freedom TV? Sure. So, well, they, they they closed the test center for a while. I think it's still closed. And, yeah, uh, no, yeah, they shut you know, it down. Somebody, some of the TikTokers, I think Jessica Palmadesa, they put for sale by owner signs on. I it saw that. <laughs> no, and they said the owner, owner was Zenu. Did you say that? Yeah, for sale by owner is Zena. I know those, oh, and they're, they're doing yeah. such an incredible job. I don't want to, in in any way, be seen as, yeah. you know, Keep, just like let them just, do it because they are just perfect. So, but yeah. I may go down there. So I had a Chris uh, without a haircut interviewed me. He's a sweet kid. He's really smart, and I I have so much uh, uh, admiration for those guys. Yeah, and and it's so great because they never have so many people who knew so little about Scientology other than the fact that it's bad have done yeah. so much to shut it down. It's just, it's just so satisfying. It's just like the great, it's like, yeah, kids that. with cell phones can take down Scientology TV. Yeah, 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 exactly. They spent a hundred million dollars. They spent $10 million yeah, on a three-year contract, multi-year like, contract to get the station. And then all you got to do is show up with your phone and the whole thing falls apart. Life. It's just crazy. There you go. Yeah, Power Media. Okay, guys. So Jeffrey, maybe yeah. I'll see you down. We'll talk later. Maybe yeah. I'll see you down there tonight. Mm -hmm. And uh, so here we go. See Bye you guys. You. <laughs> <laughs>